John Nobody Okay, I'd here. like to call the uh, Charter yet. Committee meeting to order. It is 4.30, April 22nd. Do we have any changes or additions? Do not. So we have minutes from March 18th, the last time we were here. I heard the door there. Do I have a motion to accept minutes? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. A second. So I have a motion by Richard, a second by Judy. Any discussion about the minutes? I will be abstaining. I was not at that meeting, as will I, Judy. Mm, you can actually. So are the other. Yeah. We need three of you to vote on. Oh, Ryan's on his way in. Well, um, there was three of us here. There are three yeah. of us here. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was, I'm, I was here. Correct. Right. Right. So so we're... We're... All those in favor of approving the minutes from March 18th? Aye. 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 So that would be three yeas and two abstentions. Okay. Uh, we have a guest with us tonight, as promised, Jeff Carr, an economist. Uh, and he did do a report for us. And so I'm going to welcome Jeff and uh, let him do a presentation. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks for coming. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, I'm here uh, not as an advocate or proponent or an opponent uh, to a local option tax proposal uh, for a charter change. Uh, I'm here to try to give you the facts and share with you my experience. I've done this from the ground up twice. Um, I did it uh, a couple of years ago, a few years ago in the city of St. Albans. And then last year, as a member of my own community's finance committee, it was a finance community um, uh, proposal to propose a charter change to the community to allow uh, the community to assess a local option tax. Um, I tried to lay out the various issues uh, in my memo, and I don't want to really rehash them. Uh, but I'll just at a high level say, uh, in most cases, um, communities um, who need the resources that come from a local option tax, uh, use it as a way when they have significant um, non-resident visitors that come to their community and consume public services like public safety services, roads, paths, other recreational services. Um, that uh, this is one way to allow the community to directly receive um, revenues from visitors who consume services who otherwise, the only way they come is through the property taxes of the businesses in the community that they patronize. <coughs> um, the community, as you know, you've been down this road, this isn't your first rodeo before, you can do uh, any combination or all of local option sales tax, uh, a local option uh, rooms tax, a local option meals tax, and a local option alcohol tax. It would only cover the items that are covered by the state statute for those assessments. So for example, a local option sales tax wouldn't cover the 1% motor vehicle purchase and use tax on a motor vehicle. It also wouldn't cover the part of the sales and use tax that um, uh, is raised from the use tax. There's no local option use tax. Um, the <coughs> local option sales tax and meals, rooms, and alcohol are defined whether they're covered by those local option taxes by where the good or service is received. So it only covers uh, retail sales. And in this case, obviously, it would include sales from Amazon, <coughs> Walmart, in other uh, e-commerce providers when it's delivered to an address in the community. It likewise, you could only assess room rents that are earned by providers within the community. So it would include any room rents charged and covered by the state uh, uh, rooms tax for short-term rental providers within the community. So obviously, that includes any hotels, motels, um, of which you have less than 10 now. Um, that's one of the problems with the data. Um, the tax department doesn't provide bricks and mortars providers if it goes below 10 providers. 
And in 2021 fiscal year, you guys went below 10 providers. So the last year that we have of uh, bricks and mortar providers through you know hotels, motels is uh, 2020 fiscal year. Um, so I had to do some work to do that. But it also includes providers of short-term rentals that go through Airbnb, Expedia, HomeAway, and providers oh. like that. Um, and, um, obviously it covers meals served and received within the community. Um, and it covers any alcohol tax, any, any alcohol sales that happen within the community, not liquor sales that's covered by a different funding source, but mixed drinks, beer served to somebody patronizing a local business establishment like a bar and a restaurant. Um, the charter change, uh, obviously, you know this already, has to go through uh, the state uh, legislature. In my experience, and I think it's suggested in the minutes of the last meeting that you guys already know this, that um, it's a good idea to propose charter change language that the committee and the legislature and the governor have already seen. So it's we did that in Shelburne. Um, we use the St. Albans City because I was familiar with it, charter change language. Um, and we had to tweak a little bit for, there was a change uh, that we had to tweak in terms of the citations. Um, and uh, I'm not sure how the other charter language that you're proposing to be changed might complicate this. Um, but the usual rule of thumb in working with your legislative uh, uh, a group, your legislative representatives, both your House members and your senators, your delegation, the best thing to do is to keep it as simple as possible and not break any new ground um, because they're busy down there. Um, they tend to entertain several of these now a year. A lot of communities are doing it. So it's a, it's a good idea to uh, do it uh, in that way. Um, two other things I'll mention, which I mentioned in the memo, but I think merit mentioning, um, is um, the um, ability to assess a local option tax is one of the most important things is that it has a good select board policy for how the proceeds are going to be used. And I make some suggestions in there um, that kind of mirror and, um, you know, I, I feel like the experience in my community, I live in Shelburne, Vermont, which is a pretty uh, right of center community overall. Um, and we passed it two to one, favorable. We have Shelburne Museum, Shelburne Farms, Vermont Teddy Bear, you know, as uh, attractions, we get about 200,000 visitors a year. <laughs> You are situated beautifully between Smugs and and Stowe, and I'm sure that you get that traffic, uh, you know, from those organizations. So you're kind of, I kind of felt like you're kind of like my community in terms of you have a lot of visitors, and this is a way to, uh, you know, to um, have some direct contribution for the services that you provide to those visitors. Um, the second thing, I guess. Um, I would I would mention is and it's part of the charter change process. It's very good to keep when you are serious about having a vote. Um, and if your vote is successful, that you work closely with the people in the tax department, because once you have a charter change, which won't be able to go through until the next legislative session, even if your vote is in November, there's generally not a lot of time between when the legislature would take it up and the notice requirement that you have to give to the Vermont Department of Taxes. It's usually a 90 day notice. So if you want it to go into effect on July 1st, um, which means by the way that it'll be assessed during the first quarter, but you won't get the money from the first quarter until the end of the month of the next quarter, which you maybe you already know that because you've been through this once. It's on a one quarter lagged um, basis. It's it's very important to keep them in the loop. Um, in the situation with my community, when I was keeping the tax department in the loop as to what we were doing, 
we had told them that we were doing it and they accepted as our 90 day notice uh, a few days before we actually had the town meeting vote. And so we were able to start assessing our local option tax on July 1st. So we got a full year, although we only got payments, we only get payments for three quarters of actual liability uh, assessment and collection um, going forward. And I guess I'll mention a third thing, and you probably know this based on your experience with your past proposal. I can't emphasize enough the importance of outreach and getting out and having face-to-face -face educational sessions with important groups, important people, and, um, and to do that proactively. Um, we went out to church meetings, we um, involved and made presentations to every committee and subcommittee that the community had. Um, in my community um, in Shelburne, we have a place called Wake Robin, which is a very um, uh, significant retirement home. And we went up there, they have four or 500 people who vote. And we went up and met with them and presented our materials. And, um, you know, we had a little brochure that we went with, we had questions and answers. And we put it up on the town, on the community website. We went out, we went to farmers markets when we could, and we had a booth and we did all that kind of stuff. And I just can't emphasize enough. If you decide, the select board decides to put this on the ballot, the importance of doing that. And I, I, I say that without knowing what you did the first time, um, but I, I can't emphasize um, that enough. Um, because it started out that we had some local opposition. A lot of our businesses were saying, oh, it's going to be complicated. It's going to make a you know, point of sale difficult. And, you know, a lot of times, um, uh, and, and in retrospect, after we implemented it, not one merchant complained about the software update that they had to do for the local option tax. It was pretty easily programmable into their point of sale uh, software. So, um, uh, and I know the other thing that's on a lot of people's minds when you go down this road is who pays. Really difficult to um, assess that, although we do know that meals and rooms, generally, you know, the percentage of that paid by non-residents is higher than maybe a local option sales tax, although the significant amount of the sales tax, if there's any retail activity at bricks and mortar retailing in the community is going to be paid uh, by visitors when you have, a, especially when you have a lot of visitors. And I will just share with you that the experience, and you saw the, you know, the list, you see the list, if you go on the website of the tax department of the number of communities that are doing this now, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, um, it, there's a lot of evidence now that a 1% additional assessment really doesn't materially alter the behavior of the people who patronize your retail establishments and your restaurants and your uh, bed base in the community. It just hasn't been that way. And and um, in my community, we had quite a bit of opposition from some of the um, room rent providers. And when we showed them the dot matrix of all the communities that are around us that had a local option tax on meals and room rents and alcohol, and um, we said, look at all these communities that ring all around us. Are we getting a big flow of people coming in, taking advantage of our 1% lower, you know, meals and room tax? And the answer when it was honestly given um, was no. And then the antithesis of that was, I would say to them, well, what do these other communities know about this that we don't? So um, it's, you know, I, like I said, I'm, I'm not necessarily advocating for it because you, know your community much better than anybody else and you know what your residents need and can balance the trade-offs between paying a little bit more and what you can do with the proceeds in terms of building for the community's future um but many of the arguments that you sometimes hear about how it's going to drive customers away one percent of the purchase price is not demonstrated to be something that materially affects behavior and I guess with that, I just say, that's all I really think about. I have provided you with an estimate. That estimate includes bricks and mortar retail, bricks and mortar meals, rooms, rent, and alcohol. It includes an estimate of e-commerce 
for the sales tax based on the number of households, based on the median household income uh, in the community versus the, uh, the state average. Um, it includes no revenue in the meals and rooms and alcohol tax for e-commerce providers, Airbnb, Expedia, and HomeAway, because there's no way to get that data. The tax department doesn't collect it at all until you actually start assessing it. And so I use that as a way to be conservative in what it is I put together for the revenue estimate. And I did the revenue estimate in a way in which you get in the first year, three quarters, and then one year from the liability spills into the next year. So I have that kind of rotating thing. And um, I came up with an estimate um, in the first year that's uh, about $756,000, which grows in the next year uh, to a million point oh three. <coughs> so it's not an insignificant amount of money. And I think it's worthy of your consideration of the pros and cons. And I'm here to act as a resource for you. Um, and I'll answer the questions to the best of my ability. And based on my experience, I'll share that with you. Thank you, Jeff. Um... I guess I just have a statement and then a couple of questions and, you know, I thank you for reiterating that Morristown is geographically situated in a, in a nice spot. We are right in the middle of Lamoille County and we do provide a lot of uh, retail businesses and services to the county and, uh, you know, the, a million dollars is a lot of money just to, you know, not 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 pay attention to it would seem you know we're a town of 5000 people in a county of 25000 people it would seem certainly logical that whatever whatever is taxed in this town if the lot does go through that certainly a portion of it maybe even a substantial portion of it's going to come from residents outside of town and that was that was for me anyways that was one of the arguments in favor of the lot was you know, we're providing the services for towns around us. We're, we're providing the roads, we're providing the EMS, we're providing fire, we're providing a lot of services. Some of these other towns, some these towns are providing some of these services too, but they're coming to our town and taking advantages of the retail businesses that are here. And we have to make sure these services are getting done and it's our, it's our taxpayers that are paying for those services. And this is of course a way to, garner some extra revenues from those individuals that are visiting our town and that doesn't include the people from outside of Lamont County so in my mind it would seem reasonable to suggest that you know an LLT that was put in place might be paid you know might be paid by it could be less than 50 percent is paid for <clears throat> by residents of this town and as I said a million dollars is a lot of money just to just to um, not pay attention to. I do have just one clarification. You talked about what would be taxed. You, you mentioned the fact that uh, automobile sales wouldn't be taxed. Groceries, I think we all understand, <laughs> wouldn't be sale, uh, wouldn't be taxed. Clothing wouldn't be taxed. It's not taxed anyways. Um, in the, if, if businesses are manufacturing in Morristown and then selling outside Morristown, that would not be taxed not not if they're selling products and and furthermore um uh i mean it, it's by the location of where the um product that is sold and the transaction occurs if it's within the town's borders then it would okay right. and if they're a manufacturing firm they still maintain their exemption to the sales and use tax on the energy electrical energy they use Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to get out in front on that question. And then the other thing, and then I'll pass it to the rest of the board. Yeah. And, and, and the only thing I would add on that, okay, the thing that's different is, and the thing that the community would be very interested in is that anytime they have the visit from the UPS truck or the, or the FedEx truck, and they bought something online and they receive it in town, they will owe the local, local option tax on that, just like they owe the 6% for the state. Okay, yep. Um, 
And the only other thing to, uh, to reiterate is short term rentals. And that would be, you know, a, a potential revenue source that we are currently not taking advantage of. And again, we're providing the services for um, that business sector in town. So, and, and Mr. Chair, every time that I've done a revenue forecast for a lot for local option taxes, I've been low and I've been low by the amount of e commerce room rentals that come in by e-commerce providers and people who have establishments that aren't part of what's typically a hotel motel bed base. Other, bo talk. other I, board, I'm gonna let the board members ask. I board do members indeed. Can I? Okay. Um, couple of questions, um, clarifications. Um, and again, I, I'm very concerned about this. I'm probably the naysayer on this um but that everybody keeps talking about that million we're not we would not get all of that million uh a third of it goes to the state correct yes but i've already accounted for that you when you said the seven hundred thousand, okay yes. okay and, and i also have accounted for ma'am the um uh, I mean, the uh, process. Yeah, yeah. seven hundred thousand is for the seven hundred fifty thousand is for the three quarters okay. yeah. the million if you look at the million is yeah. for it's, the it's full year. He's bringing it down to a million. Yeah. He's already okay. subtracted the pilot, 30%. Pilot, the 30% the, the pilot's taken out, plus a $5.98 per document processing <laughs> fee that the tax department okay. gets is out of it, too. Well, don't don't laugh too much. In a year, it totals about thirteen or $14,000 that you would have otherwise gotten if you yeah. had a lot. Yeah. Uh, I just want to be clear because uh, the what we're putting out there um have, did you see the vermont uh vt digger report on montpelier businesses no i haven't uh, i haven't read that just when, came when out. That come out yeah okay and why i bring that up is because i t i have talked with a lot of businesses um and vt digger reported that um between COVID and now granted they had serious floods that their restaurants are all down um, over 50% from 2019. In talking with our local restaurants, that's exactly what I'm hearing locally. Yeah, if, if any part of that was from a local option tax, that would be the first time in history that it resulted in a significant downward. No, no, this is just general business. Well, Talk yeah, that flood, that. the flood was horrible for people who were in the floodplain. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, Elmore passed, uh, they are doing just a rooms, which is what yes. I was advocating for, because that's yes. very, very clear that it's um, um, targets, you know, the outside, outside folks. So my question to you is, you seem to absolutely be against phasing in i'm for phasing in starting with rooms uh, i'd just like to hear a little more from you about why you don't think that's a good idea i've never said anything about phasing in oh um, i thought i saw uh, a read through here but what are your thoughts on phasing in if you have a community who uh definitely are opposed to it what are your thoughts um well i mean that's that's obviously for, I mean, you know the community better than I do, okay? Um, I can only share with you what my experience in my own town was. Um, we felt that if we we're gonna go through the brain damage of a local option tax vote, um, we might as well go for everything. Um, and um, I mean, it is not unheard of to uh, not go for both sales tax and for uh, meals, rooms, and alcohol. You can go for them individually. As a matter of fact, I think the town of Killington a while back had a rooms tax and they decided they didn't want it and they went to sales tax. So um, yeah, there was there is a lot of thinking about that um, out there. And um, you know, if the community you find the community doesn't want a local option tax, but would across all types of expenditures that you could assess it on, but instead would accept the rooms local option tax. That obviously is something for you folks to consider and for you to think about how you would propose that to the community. All I can tell you is um, 
the St. Albans local option tax was all of them. And that was to fund uh, future investments in infrastructure and recreational amenities. And the first project funded by the city of St. Albans local option tax was a community pool, 20, 20, a 12 month a year, year round pool. Um, and in my community, we're using it for infrastructure investments. Um, we're a lake community and we have a, a nearly $40 million uh, wastewater treatment plant upgrade um, in our future. And we're thinking about using the proceeds a lot for things like that. And that's obviously got it all of its own, all of its own uh, issues. Because in my community, for example, the farmers on the um, uh, eastern side of my community uh, wonder, since they're not hooked up to wastewater, what's in it for me? Um, but, you know, the fact of the matter is we're a lake community. We have to protect the lake. It's the most important asset here in northwest Vermont. And so um, making sure that our wastewater treatment facility is, you know, top of the line technically and doesn't um, have kind of the stormwater spillovers that so many of the wastewater systems have, it's important to prevent, protect the community asset, which is known as the Lake Champlain. So it's completely up to you. I don't think you can phase it in under the statute by saying that you'll only, you know, have a half a percent. I think you got to do 1% or, or nothing, but you could phase it in by saying that it doesn't take effect for the whole fiscal year, that it starts January 1st or something like that. You could do that. And that's entirely up to you based on what the community attitudes are and what the local politics of, of this is. And, um, whether or not maybe you're concerned that maybe now isn't the right time because of what happened with the floods, you could say that we'll do this effective July 1st instead of 2025, do it July 1st, 2026. Entirely up to this options. body's thinking. Your guys are highest on the food chain. You can do whatever you want. And I have one more question for you. Um, I manage the Morrisville Farmers Market. Um, uh -huh. So brick and mortar are already very adapted you know dealing with yep. the tax departments um how does this affect because again what we're seeing at the farmers market is there's uh, such a gray line between uh prepared foods and um you know what's what's grocery you know considered food that's not taxable with prepared that is taxed and i know that my small vendors and a lot of the food trucks are really concerned about this going in for them um, you know, who have fairly small revenues and just the extra uh, paperwork and uh, that it's going to be really burdensome for them. Yeah, that, that's not the experience, ma'am, um, with people. Um, and we, I have a lot of small producers in my community um, as well. Um, and, you know, if they got to collect it for the state, all they're doing is adding 1% for the community. So if they've got to go through it all for the state, the experience with the retailers in my community, and we went out and asked them, is, is that it's no big deal. That's what we have our point of purchase software for. Other questions? Just Richard? Jordan. As a matter of fact, we haven't had one complaint. So you, if you want us to get a complaint, call somebody up in our town and tell them to complain. <laughs> George? I just have a comment. I, I want to express my appreciation. This is both complete and concise and that's a, a hard combination to get and you've done it very well the tables are very clear and it's more money than i would have envisioned it's going to be it, it's an eye opener so thank you thank i sat for almost 10 years on a select board so i know how not to waste your time <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> brian judy <laughs> carrie well, I, I got a comment. If you could just identify yourself, please. Yeah. The microphone. Now you talk about this, uh, this thing, this thing on. It's on. It is. Yes. Talking about all this money. Identify yourself, please. Richard Lowe, Buckwheat, Morrisville, Vermont. Um, talk about all this money we're going to get. Well, let me just tell you, what are the Democrats just doing compared to the Vermont people? They robbed us. All these taxes we just got shoved up to us. Now they want you going to shove another one to us. Uh, and I'm not happy. I'm considering pulling the plug this year. 
but I'm not going to sit here and work my tail off to, to take care of the people in Mount Perry don't care about us working people, or everybody in this room. And that's why I see now. And this money, all these new taxes, we're going to feel it. The ones they... 1%, 11 percent, point one one percent for the children's fair, uh, to take care of the kids. This and that, the, the extra money for oil. They, they talk to us again. I'm I'm had it. I, I can I can walk away and be comfortable. And and the schools, I'm embarrassed. Very embarrassed. Seventeen million dollars they want when I have kids from school that work at my place. And they don't want to go to school because they say they're not learning a damn thing up there because the teachers are not doing their job. And this is the truth. I, and I, I went to school there. I did very well for myself. But this tax is just another tax. You, you don't get enough back, they'd be worth it. What is these older folks going to live on? Water? Take tax, 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 all you want. It's a, it's a new thing, and a new gimmick in the world. So I'm just stating my my thing. If this is gonna continue, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go to another state with Carolinas where they don't tax our taxes, my taxes. So that's all I got to say. Thank you, Richard. So we have a, a few decisions that we need to make. Only yeah. one more comment. Only one more. My name's Tony <clears throat> Cludia. Uh, you made a statement that we'll get this money if this significant tourist attraction in our town. I'm not convinced, and I don't know how you can convince me that Morristown is a destination town. You use Shelburne, uh, Burlington, Stowe, those I can understand as destination towns. I don't see that for Morristown. I so I don't see this large income coming. I could be wrong, that's good. I have no opinion on these taxes, tell you the truth. I, well, my problem is, we just have gone through watching the school budget defeated twice. And you're going to ask these town people are in this mood for another tax. And we're hard pressed to tell here tonight that your purpose is to pass the charter, not a tax. So it's going to be up to you folks to talk to the people in this town that you want a charter not more taxing. Because as soon as they see the word tax, my opinion is they're going no, 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 and your charter is out the window. I will hope that you give that some thought. Like he says, you know the town better than he does. I'm not so sure about that because I just saw the school budget proposal for the next budget, for their next budget vote. That's destined to fail again. So maybe you folks don't know what this town is. I hope you do. I hope you take it into consideration. Thank you. Gary, can I ask you a question? Um, it, it does seem like this would be an appropriate uh, <clears throat> presentation for our regular meeting. Um, and I would agree, because this is for the charter. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain why you chose to have it here as opposed to the regular meeting we're having it in both we're having it in both so, well there you so go so this this committee needs to make a reckon well this committee should be making a, a recommendation <coughs> okay that's why this was this is an advisory committee i think that's safe to okay. say and the job the mission of this committee was to look at the idea of a charter to look at the concept of a lot and okay. then make a recommendation to the select board okay. it's the select board and just to go through that, I mean, the select board is going to have to make a decision, and then the voters are going to have to make a decision too. And and by the way, you know, when they vote, when the voters do vote, they're going to be voting on the charter, and they're going to be voting on the LOT as a separate, as a separate issue. Those those are not <coughs> wed to each other by any means. Sorry, I don't mean to put my back to you. Okay. Thank um, you. Yeah, I just this is um, this is again. I I. And with Tom, I have huge concerns because I think there's going to be confusion. But more importantly, I also think it's important <clears throat> for the, to have this at the select board. So I didn't know we were. In fact, it's on our agenda for tonight. For tonight, for discussions the on the agenda, but yeah. not necessarily. Jeff's not going to be here for the duration of our 
select board meeting. Nope. He was presenting to the charter committee. He can at some point, but Jeff and I talked about um, <clears throat> having him come to the public meetings, informational meetings we're having. Okay. Um, and that's the next phase of our, our committee meeting okay. here is just to look at that at rough outline and, and determine <clears throat> when we should have those public informational meetings okay. that have one topic. You know, it's not um, shoved into a corner of a select board meeting, but it's a purposeful one topic meeting um, where we can have people just ask questions. Yeah. So and we'll, we'll be, make a presentation. It won't be mixed in with the charter. It'll be its own. Uh, well, it'll be charter and the local option tax. The charter only has four sections, right? As we've mm -hmm. all kind of talked about for the last three meetings, but the first two are just legally required. And the last one talks about the manager form of government briefly. But it's a one page document. I have a question for Jeff um, on page four of the uh, presentation you, you wrote for us about the revenue estimates. Those are estimates of our figures, our town figures. Is that correct? The net. Correct. Yeah. Right. So the, the, what we're seeing in front of us are real figures based on our town, um, I don't say income or our, our town data. It, it's data. based on it's based on the data from the Vermont Department of Taxes yeah. of establishments that report to them under the state statute for those tax sources. Right, okay. this is something you just made up out of thin air. Uh, well, no, and um, I've done this a couple of times now, and if I've overestimated it, it would be the first time in the history that I've ever done that. <laughs> All right, thank you. And the years are 2018 through 2022. Or the, the data that you've looked at from the tax department? Well, the, well, the data, the data are what are called 180 day data. That means that they are not preliminary data because a lot of times you have uh, people who report late and those kinds of things. So I used 180 day data and I established a fiscal year 2023 base, which means the four quarters ended June 30th 2023 and then i brought that forward to 25 26 based on the state average growth rates for those tax sources to get across 2024 because you are on a path for doing this in 2025 so there's nothing made up about it it just increases at the state average rate for meals rooms alcohol and sales thank you jeff so again, we have several decisions to make and mm -hmm. we have another meeting starting in 20 minutes, not to rush this, but I, we do. I would like to get to these decisions if we could. So we done with Jeff for the moment? I think we, are we done with Jeff? I think we are, yeah. Thank you, Jeff. You Thank wanna you. get rid of me? Okay. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome to stick around. No, no, as, as much as I'd love my um, weekly meetings over that 10 year period, um, I'm, I, I I will leave you to your deliberations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Jeff. Thank Take you, Jeff. care, everyone. And if anybody has Thank any you. questions, I'm available directly, or probably it's better you go through Carrie or Judith or something like that, just so we keep this um, sane. I'm I'm happy to try to answer any questions, and I'll even take a stab at the ones that are not answerable. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. So Thank our you. First decision then is. Um, which LOT to pursue? Which of the local option taxes to pursue? And um, Laura, you've already Rooms pointed on out the fact that we've got <laughs> several here. Yep. So we do have sales, meals, rooms, and alcohol. Any thoughts on this? I'm rooms only. We're very clear about rooms only to start. I think we leave it up to the voters. If we put all three options on the ballot, then they can decide which ones to vote for. I think we need to present all three to the voters. Have them make a decision. I agree with that. But just to be clear here, this is a charter committee. So isn't this deciding that what we put on the charter is its own thing? Mm -hmm. The article we push forward, isn't that a discussion that should happen in the select board meeting and not the charter committee? It is. It's happen in both places. Yeah, both. Okay. I just didn't want to waste too much time if we got to do it again. No, just because I think Donna's looking for consensus yeah. from the committee. Um, because the committee, honestly, this segues into my communication plan, is part of our outreach. Like, we all have yeah. people we're familiar with, and we're all going to need to 
come up with an agreeable presentation and then reach out to our yeah. our constituents so at, with that charter, one message. The charter language has a specific paragraph called local options. Tax. Right, and right. We need to decide what is going to be in that charter. So, okay. if we're, so I, can, I just want to say I would agree. Okay, I, I just I want to make sure the position would yeah. leave the voters with the opportunity to do this um, to decide well, which. I mean, if we're talking straight. If we're talking charter, yes, we should have all the options in there. Okay. But the article to me is a different thing. So we're not we're not deciding that right now. That's what I'm trying to. This all needs to be in the charter. Okay, so yes. I think we've agreed that everything is going to be in there. Yes. So that's sales, meals, rooms, and alcohol. Decision point number two: How do we? How would we, as this committee? I guess. It's you know, this, this, this committee is making recommendations to the select board. How do you see these proceeds from the LMT to be used? I know I'll just throw out, I jotted down a few of my own thoughts here. Um, I think I think part of this, and I'm going to throw out one third, should be for property tax relief. I like that to be in there. So that means that every year going forward, these are again Don's thoughts, but that a third of whatever comes in goes to property tax relief. Property taxpayers in this town have been asking for this. And this is in fact this was you know one of the reasons that we're pursuing this in the first place. Can I ask you and question the other that? the other if I could just finish the other two thirds towards infrastructure and the infrastructure would be these big ticket items that we've been we've had a really tough time with the last couple of years one being paving one being sidewalk but also new buildings we've been talking about you know public safety buildings we've been talking about highway garages these are all really expensive <laughs> items um, this is a this is an opportunity to to fund them so mm -hmm. i just want to say that sorry brian no ahead. that's all right. I, I was under the impression that any money that comes into the town is going to essentially relieve relieve property tax burdens. so what do you mean no? Well, well, what I'm saying is that let's say a million dollars does come in. Just go with that number. That three hundred thirty-three thousand dollars be put right towards um, reducing the the the, the burden on, on taxpayers given the given the town budget. Just so you want to spend the other six hundred sixty-six thousand dollars on new things that you're not going to ask the taxpayers for. Well, what we're trying to do is take that other 667,000, whatever, and use it for infrastructure on those things that, uh, those big ticket items. So for like, me as a taxpayer? For example, a, for example, a public service building, that if we're putting money towards that, then there's less of a bond that the taxpayers would have to call you up for. We're talk, we're I wouldn't vote for that. It doesn't, nobody said though, you added something on the end to that. I'm going to be picky about this. Nobody said that the, all the local option tax money, if approved, would would be spent without any taxpayer input. That's That part was just assumed. I mean, like in, in St. Albans Town, we well, have one. No, 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 it's not what he said. He said it would be used towards infrastructure. But like we got that revenue and then separately like had a vote on town hall. Had a vote on the garage, had a vote on a bridge or whatever project. So, for that, voting on the individual things, I don't understand why that money doesn't go into the bucket of town money that is the budget. To defray the cost of the budget, is that what you're saying? Yeah, because what, yeah. what it sounded like to me, and this was going to sound to the taxpayers, yeah. is if two thirds of that money isn't going against the town budget, then it's extra money. If you guys are creating extra money to spend outside of the town budget, but that, that, that's that, what it sounds like. But that's I, I see, I mean, certainly not the intent, and honestly, no, but it's what's going to sell out to the taxpayers, which, well, only if you say so that. I'm just throwing out an idea to generate yeah. discussion, so yeah. we can, we can yeah. start there. But okay, so let's paving and sidewalks. Correct. There's something right there. There's the hardcore uh, the last couple of iterations of this budget. You know, two years ago, we cut all the paving and sidewalks. Uh, this year, we've got limited money in there. That's somewhere it could go, which you know, which is part of the budget, which is part of the town budget. And that would be voted on by the taxpayers. That would be part of the budget. Yes. It's just not, I, I see what you're saying, but I also see. Yeah. It sounds like, and I understand what you're saying, but it sounds like to the average taxpayer that you're just, we want to do stuff that you guys want to vote for, so we're going to put this money aside to do the things we want to do. No, 
No, they're still going to have a say in all of this. We can't do any of that. You understand what I'm saying, though? Yeah. I, 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 I understand what you're saying. I'd like to come at it in a different way. Yeah. Um, because until I read this and, and listened to Jeff, I was thinking the residents, and it's, it, I realized that there's no way you can separate the non resident sales or whatnot from the, the resident. You can't factor that out. But it would be nice if we had that number, and I know we don't, to say to the residents, listen, 40% of the money that you just was <clears throat> what we got in the local option tax was your money. And you gave us that and we now we're getting that back. And because you're doing it, we're getting the other 60% from the non-residents. And again, we're throwing percentages out that have no basis. What I would like to rephrase what Don was saying, because I agree with it in theory, is I would want to keep the, the resident taxpayers neutral in this process. So if there's a 30% state hold back on it, then we've got to still somewhat estimate how much of the share is resident versus non-resident. But in fact, the, the local option tax hasn't cost you any money, in theory, and we'll never do the math exactly. In theory, so you, you've given us the money into the local option tax, and here's the payback for you. That may not be the right word, for the loss that you had in, the, in that process, the 30%. The 30 that would leave the that would leave then the budget process net neutral for the residents because they're the only ones paying the, the tax on the town budget. So what you do with the other component to me, if if people generally accept that theory, and that's just what I'm saying, not necessarily what we should do, then then becomes the what's the remaining amount of money for? Is it for property? Do we want to do more property tax reduction with it? Maybe if we've got a tough year in the budget, that might not be a bad idea. If, but that doesn't mean, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit. That doesn't mean to me that now we've got the liberty to, to go crazy with a budget because we've got another half a million dollars laying around so we can just spend the half a million dollars on something else and say to the taxpayers, don't worry about it. You already gave it to us. That, this is, that's exactly what I'm saying because I understand that, exactly what you guys are saying and it makes sense to me, mm -hmm. but the issue we had with the town budget last year and the issue with the school budget this year <laughs> is that they keep putting budgets up and the particulars like that are lost. And you yeah. can't possibly explain that to people. So if you say 40% of, like that, mm -hmm. it's probably a pretty close time. 40% will be an offset your taxes. The other 60% is going to go into a fund for extra stuff. To them, it's going to sound yes. like, you know what I'm saying? And that, so you're not going to get that. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, and I all too. I'm trying to do, and I think what this is trying to do, correct me if I'm wrong, is trying to just answer the question, so where is this money going to go? How is it going to be allocated? I mean, we've all heard the story of, and, and Buckwheat, you know, uh, was alluding to this, you've all heard the story of, you know, taxes going up and then that money just you know, disappears in the clouds. I would like to see it go to very specific projects, if at all. I think, so, you might be able to back me up on this. From our right. standpoint, I think if you said, we get a million bucks and the town budget is a million dollars. We take the first or ten million dollars. We take that first million dollars off, and now we're going to tax the people on the nine million dollars. Yeah. That is a thing that the pay taxpayers will, will understand mm -hmm. and want to hear. Versus, we're going to subtract four hundred thousand, and then six hundred thousand is going <clears> to <throat> so put one hundred percent towards property tax relief. Or, or into the just into the budget, not even necessarily ta tax money, but into the budget, so that the budget starts at an advantage. That's well, the um, so Richard, go, go ahead. ahead. I'm just so we already have like bridge and infrastructure fund, right? Mm -hmm. Which goes, which is earmarked money for right. those specific projects. Mm -hmm. So if we see, and this is not like we're gonna, I mean, you know, I think this is it comes to the sales part. We're not gonna go out and invent. I don't feel like we're gonna go out and invent and invent new things that we need to build. Like a swimming pool, like Jeff said, we're not going to we're we're not in any position to yes. pursue anything like that. But we need to put this money. I think that what this is getting at is we need to figure out a way where we would put this money, where it would defray taxes, and maybe to say a specific number, maybe that muddies the water a little bit to say this money is going to defray taxes, but the other sixty six percent is going to go into this fund. That's kind of that's exactly what I'm saying. Because yes, I don't I don't think that you guys are going to go spend it on a pool. But to, to put it in front of the taxpayers and say, we want to add this tax, we're going to make a million bucks, then we want to hear, all right, that million bucks is going, like you just said, into the 
whatever it is called the general funds to reduce taxes by whatever percentage. Well, is. but you guys are saying two different things. So for clarification, Richard's saying what we're we'll put some portion we're proposing. This is all proposal a portion to offset the rate amount to be raised by taxes. The remainder would go into a restrictive or restrictive fund. Let's call it that res mm -hmm. a reserve fund of some sort. And then that section would be spent on things that the select board as a whole decides. But that's different than putting it all to offset of the amount to be raised by taxes. Yeah, I understand that. I, okay, because that's I'm that's specifically sales. not advised. Yeah. It's, just, well, it's, it's, exactly, it's, it's the way that the voters are going to choose. That's what we're yeah. worried about. No, but, I understand, but like Shelburne, I mean, not with Shelburne, Williston did this, and their manager called me unsolicited when we were doing this in St. Albans and said, do not put it all towards taxes, and there's a, because there's a legislative risk, right? This money piggybacks on the sales tax rules that are set by Montpelier, if they change those rules and you're applying mm -hmm. a very large percentage, I don't wanna be on this board or even in this seat if you say, sorry, we don't have the million dollars anymore, your taxes are gonna go up. Like the best thing we can do is be slow and steady with all of these things well, going forward. Um, can, and I, tax rate. you know, having been through this budget process, uh, you know, uh, arduously, because, uh, Ultimately, people want us to reduce the budget. If we have this money and we go in and um, uh, can pay, you know, infrastructure, which um, is sidewalks or, you know, excessive pavement and stuff, then the budget overall comes down. I hear what you're saying. If you came to me and said, we're going to pay the budget down, that's the same thing they've been saying for the past two budgets. We're going to use 500 and something dollars to pay it down. We haven't reduced the budget. And that that to me is problematic that uh, I see what you're saying, but we're going to have this huge budget and it's OK because we're going to use this money to pay it down. But we're not actually reducing the budget. And I have concerns about that. Down. Yeah, can ask. I just want to say, yep. yes, mm -hmm. we've got uh, seven minutes at most right yeah. now. It's a clarifying question. I think <laughs> Kerry is the person to answer, but maybe not. Is it allowable, is it within the statutes to allocate a certain amount of money towards uh, budget reduction mm -hmm. and put the rest in a reserve fund that then the then we have a three hundred thousand dollar project that we need or a truck we want to buy or whatever the heck it is that we ask the voters can we go to the reserve fund and take three hundred thousand dollars out of the reserve fund rather than either raise taxes to mm -hmm. do the work and therefore the voters still get to say exactly what we can and can't do with that money right other than the x amount of dollars that we're putting to offset the the thirty percent that went to the state. And that mm -hmm. still allows the, the voters to say, this, no, we're not building the Eiffel Tower. I don't care if you want to do that mm -hmm. or not. That's not what we're interested in. But if we're, if we're going to need a police car or a fire truck or whatever it is, it, we've got two ways of getting it. So we can say no, but then we have mm -hmm. a truck, got a truck. Or we can say, continue to do a 10-year bond. Right. That's, a, that's fine. Give us more money. Or no, we, we've got a million dollars sitting mm -hmm. in a reserve fund, take that 500 grand and take care of the fire truck. And now we've got a reserve fund that comes from the LOT. Obviously you can't spend a dollar twice. Right, so you gotta, yes. You gotta get it one way or another for necessities. Right. I, I think that's, in my mind, is but, perception is, is reality for some people. It's things that we need to buy or do anyways, whether it's a bridge, whether it's a truck, whether it's um, a sidewalk, the necessities we can't ignore doing those but that, my, under that's my understanding my understanding money go towards yeah. projects that that really need that, that really need to be done in town that we've had a truck that tough time in the last couple of years yeah. get, so get you guys are a step ahead of me Care. i'm telling yeah. you that you will get none of this money if you decide to do it that way because people will vote all three of them yeah. down if they so, if it feels like what you're saying it's going to go into a fund that you guys can then use to spend on something mm. I'm, not, I'm saying it's a fund that hang the on. voters have to correct so i'm going to right. interrupt you, you guys before. you, you guys no private conversations can i, yeah. can I just say yeah. um, we've got five minutes i want to use the last couple of minutes here to decide yeah. brian yeah. before you go though just no, because we got to, this, no, this isn't effective 
and we, the same people asking the same questions over and over again. They weren't paying attention to reading and, and learning what's happening. And I come and spend all my time here, and it's just the select board deciding what you guys want to do. I'm not being helpful. So I, I mean, no, you're being I'm very helpful. In my life. I'm not. Every time I talk, I get told to be quiet by someone who has four questions today because they didn't yeah. read the paper. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not being effective. And like, you guys aren't including anyone in the town. And the select board is just doing what they're doing. So I, I, I've spent a lot of hours doing this, and it's just not worth my time. So my question is, how are we going to further this conversation? Because we're not getting through all these decision points tonight. I didn't write all those. Jeff wrote those as suggestions. So we're, we're done with all the decision points, I think. And to answer George's question, you. It's just, yeah. So thank you for your time. And if you need something in the future, I'd be willing to help out. But this is just, we're getting absolutely nowhere. And it seems to be what, you know. The, the status quo is so I, I just can't. You've seen all the other you know people that were on that weren't part of the select board, with your exception, also have just kind of stopped coming because it really you feel like you're just using no, our time. There's two people you. aren't here because it's school vacation, and one guy we don't know why he's not here. Yeah, yeah no, the two people. I mean, I know who they are. And they're, you know, it's just become cumbersome and a waste of our time. Honestly, it's sad because I would like to help and I'd like to be involved in it. But it was really we're getting nowhere, right? You have good ideas and we're just told to stop talking and every time we try to get into something, it, it goes the same way. So thank you for your time. And if you do, like I said, if you need me for something else, I'm willing to help out, but this doesn't seem to be getting us anywhere right now. So thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. I am gonna suggest we bring this to a close. Make a motion to close the charter committee. Adjourn the charter committee. Second. Second. So I have a motion by Richard, a second by Judy. Any discussion? I'm just curious about the next meeting. All those in favor of the journey? Aye. 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 Next Did you Yeah, I'll put it in there. Just a sign, though. There's a lot of us people do exactly what you were saying. Nobody here is going to say. That's what you have to worry about. Aye. Aye. I don't know. I do not do any of you know My kids have to do with C degrees.
You don't know one? Oh, then you don't have to. Trisha sent this to you. This is garden cheese. Hey, Trisha. So if you don't normally do it, then don't just open it. You let us know when you're ready, Judy. You all set? All set? Okay. So I'd like to call the meeting to order, select board meeting for Monday, April 22nd, 2024. On uh, the 15th of April, we had a vicious dog hearing in this room. And at the end of that hearing, we, by motion, decided to continue that hearing. And it is number two on our agenda. And what I would like to suggest is that uh, we reconvene that meeting tonight, but that we do that under other business after we've done everything else in that way, uh, because that will be in deliberative session and uh, we will be um, asking you all to leave while the, while the select board makes its final decision in regards to that. So we will continue that later, if that's okay? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Do we need to make a motion in that regard? I would make a motion that you reconvene as the select board dealing with the vicious dog hearing. It was a different circumstance than what you're dealing with tonight. So I'll uh, entertain a motion to reconvene the vicious dog hearing. So Second. So I got a motion by Richard, second by George. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Agenda changes and additions. No, I do not have them. none <clears throat> approving minutes uh, there are as warned there were two sets of minutes warned that needed to be approved, but they were actually already approved, so I just want to say the minutes of 329 and the minutes of 4 2 April 2nd were already approved and they, that was done at the uh, meeting on April 5th. So that is done. So I'm gonna move on to number two, approve the special, uh, the select board special do Hamel pit minutes from the 1st of April, 2024. So moved. I got a motion to approve. Second. Second by George. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from April 1st? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Number three, approve the minutes uh, for our select board meeting on the 1st of April, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 1st, 2024. Second. Got a motion by Richard, second by George. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from 1st of April, 2024? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous as well. Minutes from April 15th, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 15th, 2024. Second. Got a motion by Richard, second by George. Discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from April 15th, 2024? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous as well, Judy. <laughs> Approve the minutes from the 18th of April, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 18th, 2024. Second. My motion by Richard and a second by George. Discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from the 18th of April, 2024? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous, Judy. And finally, the minutes from April 5th, 2024. <clears throat> 
I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 5th, 2024. Aye. Motion by Richard, second by George. Mm -hmm. Discussion? Yes. I think there's a typo. Um, the, uh, the second motion made, motion made by Chris Palamo, approve the minutes of April 2nd, 2023. I think it means 24. Okay. What page is that on? Uh, I got, I got 16 of 51, okay. if yeah. by the packet mm -hmm. that we're working mm -hmm. with. Okay. So we got that one change. That's, That's it. Yeah. Okay. Unless I'm missing something. Any other discussion? discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion with that change? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. I don't think we've ever approved this many minutes in a meeting. We've had a lot of meetings. We've had a lot of meetings. We've had a lot of meetings. Town manager update under new business. Um, I would ask the um, board, we've had a chance to look at the contract. I would ask for a uh, motion to approve the town manager contract. I'll make a motion to approve the new town manager contract. I will second it. Okay, so we have a motion by uh, Richard and a second by Laura. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That Aye. would be unanimous. <laughs> and <laughs> now that it's Static. official, oh. I will introduce our new town manager who is in the room. And uh, his name is Brent Raymond. And uh, we are we're very excited to uh, welcome Brent to Morristown. We had uh, we had over a hundred applications for this job. We had a uh, selection committee that was uh, that was uh, put together by several members of the audience here that are here tonight, and they forwarded three names to us, and we had a series of interviews as a select board and we were uh, successful in coming up with Brent as our new town manager so I would uh, I would welcome you very much I don't, Brent I don't know if you want to say a couple of words I wasn't expected to but uh, you don't have come, to. On up, come on up to the microphone if you don't mind and introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Brent Raymond. Uh, I'll turn this way a little bit too. Uh, born and raised in Swanton, Vermont. Uh, my grandfather was uh, raised here in, in Morrisville, so I'm very excited to uh, take on this responsibility for the townspeople and to uh, you know create the improvements that the select board is looking for and to work with everybody. So. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been a wonderful process and you have a lot of committed uh, community members in this town. So I'm really excited to work for you. So thank you. Thank you very much, thank Brent. You, thank you for coming tonight, Brent. And it's my understanding that you will try to attend our, our um, select board meetings until you officially become the town manager. All of them on my, on my calendar, so. Okay, great, thank you. Welcome. Pardon me? We have a date on or before June 2nd. So the contract speaks to on or before June 2nd, and we'll probably be able to clarify that at a future select board meeting. So, thank you. Um, number two, Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. Can I, can I hang on one sec? Sure. Um, just I wanted to be clear. I thought you were going to do this. I apologize for jumping in. Uh, very specific thank you to um, our committee members, yes. thank you. Um, yes. Jamie Brewster, yeah. uh, Sarah Wasserman, um, Nancy, Nancy Banks. Banks, and Monty Mason. Um, uh, certainly for the select board, you guys did an amazing amount of work uh, to get the information to us. I also want to thank Tom Collier, who took it upon himself to push through a petition and to the 225 uh, people that signed that petition um, because two select boards did not push the article forward. 
And thank you to Tom who pushed the petition through and we now have a manager. Sarah, and what? Sarah and Tina, who also served on the Oh, Sarah and Tina, yes, yeah. so thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Number two under new business, Board of Liquor and Control, uh, Tobacco Control. I would need a motion to recess the select board meeting. I'll make a motion to recess the select board meeting and the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control. I will second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are now in liquor and tobacco. We usually take these separately. Do we have do we have any tobacco at all or is it all liquor? There is one tobacco. No, there's, there's three tobacco. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking at minutes. Yeah, there's a lot of those. Mm -hmm. One with yellow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I would, uh, and Jason Luno has. He's reviewed the list and sent an email to Sarah and I that he had no issues with anyone on this list. Okay, great. Good. I'll, uh, are we, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the liquor license as listed do we do i need to read through we usually read them down the list maybe not everything on the spreadsheet but just their names i'll make a motion to accept uh, bombastic and in industries llc claremont restaurant incorporated lost nation oh. brewery llc morrisville food co-op llc rl valley inc rl valley inc it's two maple fields uh 1013 llc vermont harvest catering and lost nation oh i said Oh, no, Lost Nation Brewery LLC. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I have a motion, a second? I'll second that. I got a second by Richard. Jason has no issues with this. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. Tobacco license renewals? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the renewals of RL Valley, uh, which is Maple Fields on the Port Street. RL Valley, which is Maple Fields on 15 West, and DG Retail LLC, which is Dollar General. So I have a motion by George and a second by Richard. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. And a request to cater permits. I'll make a motion to approve the request to cater permits by 1013 LLC Music Festival. I have a motion. Second. Oh, yep. I have second by George. Any discussion? Who's 1013? 257 Portland Street. Moves. Oh, moves, oh, moves. right. That's right. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. Okay, that would be unanimous. I want to back up for one second. I'm sorry. And that's who made the motion and who seconded Made the motion? Second. Okay, I need a motion to come uh, to close liquor and tobacco and, and, re and reconvene select board meeting. Okay, great. Thank you. So I have a motion to uh, close liquor and tobacco and reconvene select board meeting. Second, Second by George. Yep. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving on. Fire department truck. So would you like to start this? I, I can. Um, it's a, a short story. The fire department is replacing their primary engine. Um, it was approved on town meeting day. Um, Denny has worked with the fire department um, truck committee. It, it wasn't all the officers, so I'm not sure. Um, and they propose the um, specs you see in your hand um, in your hands out. So at this point we're at I'm just bringing it to people um, the select board and the voters just to let you know that we're going to order a new engine. Um, it came in within the parameters of what we thought it was going to cost. Um, it does take almost two years to arrive. So putting it in now um, means we all might forget that this happened, but in two years a fire truck should should be here. Um, and I'm working with finance on um, exactly how much we might put down 
you know, interest rates are changing. So we'll have to see if it um, is better than what they're going to offer us for a down payment interest rate. Um, otherwise, we're we just plan to put down a little bit of uh, down payment. And just to reiterate, these are custom because of the size of our fire building, correct? They are customized or required to be because the doors of the fire station are a little narrower than what's standard now. So we have to get a non-standard truck to fit into that. And is that uh, attributing to the time factor in getting them? Not really. I mean, I just signed uh, paperwork last summer for a fire truck and it was around two years at that time, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, there's it just so, it takes a while. We have no action that we need to take on this. The voters have already approved Correct. this. So, Correct. so this is really just information right. for the board but and I for mean, the public. We're in that, even if it is a manager form of government, I think it's important as a taxpayer, if I wasn't sitting here, I'd wanna know that a, a many hundred thousand dollar truck um, mm -hmm. is being ordered. And this is what some of those savings accounts are paying for too. So I think it's just kind of important to know. Okay. Question, John? Yeah. Kerry, I think it's Kerry. Can be you. you no. Know, um, this truck is is will be ordered. Mm -hmm. When is the price set on order or on delivery? I mean, we're talking about a two year span. Order. Order. Okay. Yep. The price is set on that proposal that you have that was signed by the um, representative. Okay. And the representative for this company just happens to live in Franklin County, Vermont. So they're kind of local, mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Jenny's comfortable with with everything. Else okay. Here. Thank you. Yeah. Any more discussion? Okay, Oxbow Park update. So, um, the Oxbow Park, as we all know, is a, a, a very important resource in the town of Morristown. And um, unfortunately, it has been flooded multiple times. It was flooded just twice in the last, um, in the last year with substantial damage. And as we're kind of moving forward here, I think most of us understand that there's an upper deck and there's a lower deck. And the upper deck, there's, there's already, um, there's already a, a concert series out for Wednesday nights, which is great. I think most of us will be happy to, to hear that. I know a lot of us attend that. The community gardens are uh, ready to be occupied and it looks like there's gonna be a lot of activity with that as well. So I think the upper deck, you know, we've, we've already got some plans out there. I, what, what tonight is really about is the lower deck. And, you know, before I move on from the upper deck, we're gonna to continue to explore what needs to be done there. That's not to say that's a done deal by any means, but we'll continue that conversation. But the lower deck, Conversation on the lower deck really began about six months ago. An individual who's in the audience right now, who I think may come up and, and speak to this, brought up the idea of trying to enhance that lower deck and um, with tree plantings in particular. And that's where the conversation began and no fault of uh, Administration. I mean, we've had we didn't have an administrator for quite a while. We we do now, and we've had a lot of stuff on our plate. But we're back to back to this discussion now, and um, I'm glad to see there's a number of people in the audience here tonight that I think are interested in what's going on in that lower deck. Uh, I know there's members of the Morrisville Conservation Commission here tonight, and they may be speaking to this. Uh, and we do have somebody here from the Lamoille County Conservation District, and that's Peter Danforth. And I'm gonna invite him to come up first because he's the one who really got this whole conversation going about the lower deck and got this whole conversation going about <coughs> tree planting and got this whole conversation going about what we're gonna do with this important resource that unfortunately um, has, a, has a very strong likelihood of uh, flooding in the future. And so we're, we're gonna have a conversation here about rehabilitation and mitigation. And so Peter, if you don't mind coming up, I'd sure. give you the microphone. Hello everyone. Yeah, so again, yeah, I'm Peter Danforth, the district manager for uh, Lamoille County Natural Resources Conservation District. That's the full title. 
we shortened it to Lamoille County Conservation District because it was easier for people to say. Uh, so the districts are, there's 14 districts in the state. We've all been tasked to basically deliver conservation programs uh, and also to help implement them. Um, and uh, we've been around since about 1945 um, after the Dust Bowls and to our primary sort of task was to help uh, with erosion and healthy soils, but that's brought into clean water and now to, um, you know, programs that will help with climate change. Um, so uh, about six months ago, I did propose a tree planting. Uh, at the time, it was a large scale tree planting, which was the entire perimeter. This is before, well, this is kind of in between the two floods, if I recall. And, um, and we kind of looked at the area and where we decided, well, well, let's start with a small one on the one side that has less damage uh, and see what needs to happen with the, um, I guess, east side, which got heavily eroded with gully erosion uh, around December uh, after that flood. Um, so I did bring some materials here. Um, I don't know what you wanted me to do. Put them on the, let me put them here. So I can put them on the end. I can too. indicate what they are. Uh, one of them is a Vermont statute, a municipal, uh, municipal and county government law that talks about uh, the rules of tree planting on riparian areas. Uh, and the third page, I could pass somebody around to if you want to indicate, <clears throat> kind of in highlight, uh, what towns can and can't do in regards to tree planting. Um, so I don't know if you want to pass that around. And then I did bring. Our newsletter, which just came out. So if anyone wants to pick that up, I can put it on the um, table outside. And then the map, I could pass around to you. This is a small area that we proposed to plan at some point. If we're getting permission to do so. Um, so, yeah, the, the, so that's one part. Um, also, we, you know, as conservation districts, we work in, in education and outreach. We have a summer camp. We work with a lot of high schools. Uh, we work, work with a lot of elementary schools. And, um, you know, it was suggested and I, I, by other people aside from myself that maybe, you know, with the, the lower deck could potentially at some point be re naturalized, revegetated, and maybe be a natural classroom for the students from the various institutions to come down and use. And that can take many forms, shapes and forms. And I, and Carrie, you too also mentioned the fact that, you know, maybe there should be a really legit master plan about that um, lower deck. And uh, the district would be more than happy to help with that, uh, along with other, any other partner organizations we work with. So anyway, that's, right. that's all I got for now. Okay. And so the plan, the suggestion at this point is to to do tree plantings on the east, on the, the west, west side. side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a small portion there that isn't already buffered. Some of the areas are buffered already. So we kind of sort of an amorphous blob, but it's approximately three quarters of an acre. It would be about 300, approximately 300 stems. So we use bare root. They're about two to four feet in length. Uh, various conservation varieties. We use, utilize 18 to 20 different species. Uh, the reason we plant, I mean, that's a fairly medium density. We could be planted in higher densities, uh, but density is important because you want a certain amount of survival rate um, with the trees, but you also expect a certain mortality and you understand that there's a natural progression as to which trees will take over and become evident there. Um, and then with the new clean water service provider funding that's happened in the state, um, the different um, regional uh, planning commissions have been tasked with doling out money to not only do projects like this, but also to give maintenance money to. In the past, we've been able to plant trees and maybe get two years worth of maintenance funding. But after that, it's been pretty much up to the landowner we're working with. Uh, but now if these uh, clean water service providers take adopt these programs, um, then they could have up to 10 years or more of maintenance and supplies and whatever you might need. So that's a good thing. So, you know, the state is obviously wants buffer zones to happen. Um, this post flood uh, moment where we're living in, um, it's highly suggested that areas that are close to rivers um, are not further developed 
and that's anything that they're, they're revegetated or, or to allow for flood uh, mitigation, flood absorption, for lessening soil erosion, for wildlife habitat, um, for clean water and phosphorus in the Lake Champlain as well. There's a lot of money for that. And these uh, tree plantings are really inexpensive ways of achieving all those goals. <clears throat> they're not high budget projects. And the grant money we get, it fully funds these tree plantings, so the towns would not have to pay anything except we provide some sort of in-kind resources. So if there's someone I need to work with in order to do it from the town, that would be their time and volunteers for planting. So the volunteers would add up as a match towards the grant that we've received. So um, on the whole, it's very, very inexpensive and easy thing to do. So it's really, it's, it's free for the town. It's free for the town, yeah. Yeah. Monetarily and, speaking, yes. Yeah. And you've reached out to the Morristown Conservation Commission Regarding we've, this, we've talked about a few different things, including, yeah. <laughs> well, they've reached out to me. Let's put it that way, and uh, and I'm glad they did. And yeah. um, there's, there's other projects as well that we're looking at. Well, they've reached out to me as well. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. great. Um, yeah, it's interesting. The things that you're talking about right now were on WCAX this morning. There was a segment on there, and they were doing uh, in the lower Winneski River Valley the same thing for all the same reasons. Yep. Yep. And, and these have, tree, tree yeah, these tree plantings can certainly help to mitigate the flooding issues that we're that we're having. Yeah, they, they create um, an area that can be absorbed. So you're basically bringing in water. You have per, impermeous surface. So I mean, permeous surface, per, pervious surface rather than impervious surface. So if you're going to be developing down there with anything other than trees, it's going to be creating issues that would raise the flood levels and create damage to those impervious surfaces. Yeah. So it, it allows for absorption and to evaporation as well. Yeah. Can we ask questions? You sure can. Um, the uh, I'm in the process of taking down a bunch of trees that have grown forever. Uh -huh. um, so I'm curious, how long is it gonna take uh, these trees? Like how tall are they? And how long will it take for the roots to actually, like I, I'm concerned about planting all these trees and then a big flood comes and they're gone. So what's... Well, when they're at that size, it's almost better <laughs> because when they're small, they can actually be flattened down into the ground. I've had this happen a few times. Mm -hmm. They're main rooted. Some may, if it's an erosion uh, feature that occurs during a flood, then you may lose some. Uh, but that's sort of what you're up against. You know, you, you never know what's going to happen, but you're better off having them there than not. Um, I, we just planted out in Woolcott, um, the Fish and Wildlife, near um, Elmer Pond Road. And um, we planted between the floods, so the big flood and then the one in December, um, we had about 95% survival rate on stems this big. Mm -hmm. And they were all budding out and they were doing fine, even though it was obvious that they'd been washed through up to two feet above them. So because they're small, they're, the, the resistance level on them is like they'll go down and come back up. And you can go out and with the maintenance funds that we'll get too, we can make sure that, okay, this area got destroyed, we'll pre-plant. Now, it will take a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, you get a tamarack that you plant that's this big, it might take 20 years to get to 15 feet, you know, but it, that's pretty fast. Mm -hmm. But the idea is to just plant ahead, you know, try to stay ahead of it. Um, you know, you could go in with larger elements, it would be much more expensive to do so. And if, if they haven't rooted in and they get damaged, it's going to be a lot more of a problem than a smaller um, tree. And what, so. what type trees are you putting down there? I'm assuming ones that have a deeper root base as opposed to the some of the evergreen trees that, are shallow. Yeah, that, are, that, that you would find in those areas, generally speaking, Too, you know, yeah. so we have shrub willows, black willows, hibiscus cranberries or danny berries or uh, cottonwood even. Uh, we could try that. You know, there's certain yeah. because of uh, the way temperature changes going, some of these, some oaks that normally wouldn't be able to, at this area could be planted in, but um, uh, yeah, there's, I have a list of probably 15 or 20 that we normally use. Uh, okay. Birches, yellow birches. Is the window still available to plant this spring? Uh, so I did, okay, so I have this juggling act I have to do every year between our tree sale and the amount of tree plantings we're doing, and I never know how much to get. Um, but fortunately, we can play in the spring and the fall. 
And uh, either way, in the spring, it's usually between now and mid to late May. And the fall, October, early November, um, we've had a lot of success uh, planting in the fall too, you know, so that's an option as well. So we just sort of do continual plantings here and there um, when we have the funds or the trees available. Uh, theoretically, the amount of trees I have right now, I could uh, have enough to do that small area that um, I put in the map. Um, that would be approximately up to 300 trees. And I may have not enough for another planting we're doing, but I can just finish that in the fall. So I have that flexibility you know, to juggle, so and to speak. Do we need state approval, FEMA approval? And given that if it washes down, it goes into the dam, do we need trustee approval? So according to the laws, there is no permitting required to plant trees in public land, municipal land. Um, so no, okay. and the short answer is no. There, um, these tree plantings and buffer zones are the easiest permitting process because there isn't really any permitting required for them. Uh, even in um, private land, we just need the private landowner's approval. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it makes it easier, inexpensive, and the lack of permitting, yeah, is absolutely key. In fact, the statute that you're highlighting for us yeah, right here <laughs> makes it even easier for that. Yes. For these yeah. plantings to occur as yeah there's yeah. a few little things above the highlighted thing that says well, you know what may be needed to be permitted but usually involves buildings of some sort or yeah. structures or um, but as far as just planting um unless there's some previous obscure bylaw or something that you know that was put in place by a municipality it wouldn't affect it and i don't most to most of my knowledge there isn't in the state but uh that's something to look at there yeah. And they highlighted that highlight is actually on the state site, so I didn't highlight that. That, that was highlighted. that wasn't. I think it came out of maybe a conversation or two that's happened around this, and then they just bolded it and said, "Look, you can plant without permitting here in public riparian areas specifically." Other questions? Thank you. Thank Welcome. you, Peter. Yep. Yeah, thank you. I guess my question to to Don and to Carrie is that um, this is one aspect of it, but are we going to address the big gully that's going through? I mean, there's more to that lower deck than the planting. Uh, and that's what I think in terms of long term planning is, you know, what what are we going to what are our thoughts? <laughs> well, the gully has been filled in. Yeah. Um, so that's been repaired. That's been was that FEMA or was that town money? Town. Yeah. And actually, I think we got some. Um, FEMA. Or FEMA. No, we got some crushed up stone from a nearby <clears throat> neighbor who was having to get rid of it, so it we didn't even have to pay for that. It was free while they were trying to re restore it. We did not add any. So just, the purpose of this discussion is yeah. just to finalize what began, as Peter said, the last trees, October. And you know they've been waiting pretty patiently to hear from yeah. us as to what we want to do. Uh, yeah, so I guess I'm asking is, do we need to have a conversation about bigger picture? Well, you I sure think do. We do yeah. have to have a bigger, yeah, bigger yeah, picture conversation, and that's where the upper deck comes in as well. Yeah. Okay. And you know there are grants to help create um, some consensus around um, municipal, uh, like a municipal grant about. Um, master plan right so that right that would involve all the partners it would include employees um just so that Peter. everybody's clear that this tonight is specifically for the trees yeah that's correct okay. right i mean you know we have we've made progress in hiring people but we've been short staffed um yep. in yep. more than just one area so no long-term planning for oxbow has been done okay yet yet hi uh, for the select board, the scale of the tree plan. Sorry, Todd, can sorry, you introduce Todd Thomas, yourself? I'm your community appointed uh, floodplain coordinator. So, as the floodplain permit, I agree there's no per permit person, I agree there's no permit necessary. It doesn't mean this is a good idea to do so. If you're planting a, a few dozen trees along the perimeter of the river to help stabilize the soils and the banks, it's a great project. In fact, I think I actually, the last time Peter did this, I helped plant him with a shovel myself. I'm concerned about the large amount of trees proposed, the amount of fill that would put into 
the floodway of the river. If we're talking about a few dozen trees, no big deal. If we're talking about hundreds of trees, and this is phase one, there could be many hundreds of trees. This is the floodway. So the difference is the Conservation Commission should be applauded. They voted to put trees in the upper deck of the oxbow, which is in the flood fringe, which trees are great. Put all the trees there you want. The lower deck where it's being proposed in the floodway, the floodway is in the mathematical bounds, the banks of the river. You're going to be adding fill to the river and you'll be exacerbating flooding issues if you plant these trees proposed. Again, if you want to plant a few trees for help with soil, soil stabilization, uh, help with bank erosion, great. The amount of trees here, if these trees grow to be two feet wide, the little bath, uh, back of the envelope math I just did, at two feet wide in a couple of years, well, obviously 10, 15 years, you're talking about 5,000 truckloads of fill you're adding into the riverbanks of the Oxbow. That riverbank, the floodway, it's a full bathtub. When you put stuff in it, you're pushing water on other people's property. You're flooding someone else out with all these trees. So I like trees. Trees are great. Plant them on the upper deck. You can plant them on the top half of the lower deck. Do not plant them all the way down, at least not in that number, all the way down the lower deck of the Oxbow. You're making flooding problems worse. I've given my opinion on this. I have an engineer give my opinion on give his opinion on this. We both agree you're making flooding problems worse because of the amount of trees proposed. That's so, all. what engineer? What uh, engineer said that? Uh, emails with Don. I had an email engineer of the Northeast Kingdom that I work with on occasion. Well, it sounds like we have a difference of opinion. We might need to pay for our own engineer. So, I would just say, I mean, I just want to be clear. Yeah, we're talking 300 trees. So, I I did some very quick math just so everybody knows. If you did, and these are trees that are less than an inch in diameter, and you can do this. This is pretty, this is just basic high school <clears throat> geometry, but you can calculate the surface area of these 300 trees, and it comes out to less than two square feet. It's, it, well, they're, so small, it's, they're small trees now. They're but small trees, they're but, they're, but small. they're not all going to survive either. That's the reason we're putting so many in, or this is the, that's, the, that's the reason for the proposal, is put them in because you go to any area where they do any tree plantings, whether it's on the side of rivers or whether it's a, an area that's been clear cut for forestry, they put in way more trees than they ever plan on having survived because there's just not that much room for them. So the 300 trees are not all going to survive to be two feet in diameter, not even close. Um, the mortality over and to get to a two foot tree in that area is going to take a long time. I mean, I think one of the great, great reasons for this is We've got to start. We've got to start, you know, uh, repairing and mitigating what's what's been happening down there. We 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 can't continue to kick this can down the road and do nothing. Look, if we don't do anything with the lower oxbow, it will revegetate itself. It will retree itself. If we just walk away from that for the next hundred years, it will do that. It probably, frankly, should do that because that's it's part of the river. That lower deck really belongs to the river, and the river's going to slowly reclaim it. It's either going to reclaim it by washing it all away and washing it downstream and impacting all our facilities and our dams and whatnot downstream, or what we have a chance to do here is we have a chance to do something, start now, and start you know helping this river and helping the lower deck uh, be what it wants to be, certainly what it once was, and we can save that the fill that you're talking about won't erode away. The material that's washing downstream will get caught. I mean, you, all you have to do is go up to Tinney Bridge and see what the few trees that are standing there are doing right now. We're worried about these 300 twigs washing into the dam. Go down to Tinney Bridge and look at what six trees have cleaned out of the river last year. It is way more. It is many dump truck loads. It's way, way more than what these three, 300 trees would ever account for. And that would have washed downstream. I would argue if you go to, go to any river in Vermont right now that still has a forest on both banks, and you can see visually, it is so obvious what's happening. These trees are filtering all the crud they're filtering all these twigs, and some of these twigs are solid trees that would otherwise, otherwise wash down. They are um, <laughs> holding back the water. Yeah, they're holding back the water so that it doesn't shoot downstream at some severe velocity. One of the problems we have on our rivers is the water's going downstream way too fast. As it goes down too fast, it causes destruction. It causes problems. 
That's what we want to do. We want to, we want to slow this water down so that it's not destroying what's downstream. We want to find places for this water to be held. Um, we went to, there was a, sorry to go on about this, but it's just, it's important to me. Uh, we, we had a flood mitigation meeting at LCPC not too long ago, and there was a couple of individuals from uh, Morristown that joined me in that. And Wolcott and Johnson are doing a lot to, you know, Peter's talked about it, not just tree plantings, but finding places for water to be held so that it doesn't all go downstream and doesn't cause the damage downstream that water is, is, um, is causing. We don't want the water to go downstream really quickly. We want it to go down slowly. That's why we're trying to bring back wetlands. That's why, that's why Wolcott is trying to find areas to develop wetlands. That's why Johnson's trying to find uh, room to develop wetlands and find ways to um, mitigate this this flooding that's going to happen. I don't think there's a soul in this room that's arguing that flooding isn't going to happen again. It's how bad it's going to be and what are we going to do to begin to take some action. Doing nothing clearly doesn't work. Um, thinking that we're smarter than nature doesn't seem to work very well. I'll just reiterate that the, the river is going to take back that lower oxbow. It would be really nice to have it still there when the river does take it back. And it'd be really nice to have the vegetation, the riparian vegetation there, that's going to help to hold on to all that material. Yeah, I guess my part of my concern is, you know, there was a huge ditch. We've now filled it in. So now when that water hits, is it just going to go over? And the, ultimately, the question is, how many times are we going to fix this? Right. You know, and, and granted, we're not spending money, but it's still a lot of time of our highway. Um, and, you know, when is it time to throw up our hands, put a barrier between the upper and lower and move on? Laura, you're not allowed to fill the lower. There's no fill in no, the no, floodway, I, just so you know. Oh, but they filled in the uh, gully. I just heard that myself, and that's a, that, that could be a flood. That's, uh, that yeah, could be a I, violation. I, this is what they did after the last summer floods. I was the town surprised. put in 124 yards of gravel, 89 yards of topsoil, and 210 yards of stone. That's the fill we're putting in, only to repeat the same process over and over again. It's gonna go and I don't disagree with most of what Don said. Trees are good. Trees filter things. Trees yeah. help with bank erosion. Don't put them all in the floodway. You're putting too much in the floodway. You're pushing water in other people's properties. When we just bought out a, we just bought out a house on Route 15, that was flooded and there was a house next door that the water came within an inch of getting in their house. If we start doing this and filling our floodways, that water will be in their house next time. Because that will slow down the water. Those trees will act to catch debris and it will back up the river and it will back up into that house. And so I just want to make sure that and you will all it just do. Will it come up to the upper deck, which... It will know. slow it down upstream. I just want to make upstream. sure you all knew yeah. is I feel like it's my duty. I am the I am the flood zone expert for the town. I'm your appointed person. I don't recommend this plan at this scale. I just want to reiterate the 300 sticks that we're putting in the ground are you're not going to be able to measure the, the height of water that it would ever cause to go up. The state of sticks. Would be so an issue. but but re rehabilitating that habitat and trying to slow the erosion that's clearly happening. The erosion that you're just referring to that you're talking about getting filled in i mean that's going to continue at some point we need we need to do something we can throw our hands up in the air and do nothing and it's just going to get worse and worse and worse i do agree with yeah. you i don't i don't want to throw money at that lower deck that's why i think it's great that the mall county conservation district i know i didn't say that quite right natural resources conservation district <laughs> is willing to get the grant money for us and bring the thousands of dollars in to uh to to buy these uh to buy these trees and also to put them in the ground i'm just could we use that hundred thousand dollars into a place that would be more permanent it is well it's not a hundred thousand dollars like six thousand yeah. dollars i'm just but, saying yeah. is how much time do we spend you know and when do we decide to cut our losses and start putting energy into something that is going to be there that's that's all but yeah it's, it's a I, tough call yeah. and that's why i'm i'm looking for more long term but I think we can see what's going to happen to we can see what's going to happen to the lower deck 
um, if we don't do anything. Yeah. It's going to disappear. Hi, I'm Tom Stames, and uh, one of the hats that I wear is with the Morrisville Soccer Club. I've been president of that for 20 years, and we've had we've loved the use of the, the lower deck uh, of the oxbow and it's floods every year and it was never an issue um, water comes across it and floods just like it does on the uphill side of the, the the other side of the river floods across that field but you don't see boulders and stuff on the other side of the the, the river the boulders evolved this all started when that my belief when the gravel path was put in on the right hand side of the oxbow as you're looking down at it there's a gravel path that was put in it used to be all grass there gravel paths put in and now that the river hits that turns it up spits it back on carries all that gravel onto the uh onto the uh soccer field area whatever so my belief and i'm again i'm no civil engineer is that if there was grass just grass there <laughs> a, a good sod base or you know if landscape fabric was bad was buried down in there i don't know i'm not i'm not an engineer but the whole issue is that the water coming across is washing that gravel that gravel is not coming up out of the river we're not talking about the bottom of a canyon the, the water level is 15 or 20 feet below uh the river all that gravel that's on the oxbow or was on that oxbow last week or last two weeks is coming from the upper the, the lower deck itself you know yeah. the, the upper deck got flooded with all the gravel from the from the parking lot but the lower deck if that was grass dirt the water would flow across you'd have some logs out there it would be easy peasy and it was for 20 years to to clean up afterwards we would you know occasionally we had one little gravel bank that would run down on the field that you know a couple of us volunteers would go down there and scoop it up with wheelbarrows or a little bobcat and clean it up no problem so my contention belief again my soul an engineer is that there's a way to make that to firm up that that upper the upper upstream side of it so that it doesn't wash all that gravel that just got pushed back there from resurfacing yeah. so that's that's my belief planting the little trees I'm all for planting trees to help the erosion mm -hmm. or whatever. It seems to me that the first place we should plant them would be on the upper side where we want to maintain that integrity of that bank there rather than on the leeward uh, side of the river. Just if, if their intent is to take root and take hold, it seems to me that's where they should be. Some number of years ago, if I say five, it means it's 10, it means it's 15. Some trees were planted some little apples or something like I don't recall somebody might remember on the on the uphill side and you know a hole was excavated you know five feet to plant these trees or something and they were plunked in and, and those that where they where they excavated to put those trees in that's what washed up and let the water run onto there so I would think that we should have somebody that knows something about uh maintain not, not, this isn't a pokey <laughs> thing, but somebody that knows more than i do i should say um figure a way to firm up that side okay thank instead you. of us you know pushing that same gravel back like laura said have it wash over on the field push it back next year and it seems to me that if we had something and i don't know you know if, if you know burying tires down to create you know a barrier so it doesn't gouge down in something that wouldn't be creating a dam or adding worry about fill or okay you know, thank you tom yeah i'm gonna i'm yeah. gonna ask if if people can try and limit their conversation to two minutes i know it's hard oh. Oh, i know <laughs> yeah could you would you mind yeah because this uh, so a quick response to a couple of comments um first off trees are not fill trees contain fill let's be clear about that um we did the reason we did this, this uh, plan for the west side was because at the time we didn't know the time frame of what the town was going to do in regards to the fill in those uh, gully erosions. And so we just figured, oh, well, we can do what we can when we can do it. Um, ideally, you would want to make the buffers extremely wide. In the past, we've done very narrow buffers. 
and they can only do so much. Uh, if you really want to have a system regrow, you need to make those buffers wider. If you want to have a soccer field, for instance, you would need buffers on either side to protect that and prevent that fill from entering to the soccer field and create less of an issue of repairing the soccer field. So I just wanted to like kind of make people understand that there's a reason and the, in these soft buffers, we call them of trees, are important because if you try to put some kind of wall or hard riprap scenario down on that, it's gonna create so much force heading downstream. It's gonna create flooding issues for other people downstream that are gonna be far worse than if the riprap wasn't there. So we, the, the, the trees provide not only a soft buffer, but an absorption of the force um, and a containment of the force. And if you, if you have that, then you're limiting that pressure downstream as well. So this is something that, you know, I could bring in about three or four state engineers, as well as um, science, river scientists from the state that would completely agree with everything I'm saying right now about the situation. So if you if you want some of that backup, I can get them here in an army uh, to tell you. Thank you, works. Peter. And also, while we're waiting for the next person, I was make, I was aware that the department or the highway department went down there. I'm not saying the entire thing was filled. They just were concerned about some safety things. So before that takes on a life of its own um, as a possible flood violation, I am, they did work down there and we will certainly get every permit we're supposed to get. Go ahead. Mason Kemmer, Laporte Road. I am a civil engineer and I will agree with Peter's um, plan and Don's comments. They all sound spot on to me. Thank you very That's much. All. Thank you. I know there's members of the Morristown Conservation Commission here. I don't know if they want to step up and offer some some words. Jerry Throne, I'm not speaking for the Morristown Conservation Commission. These are my own opinions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I believe uh, what what Peter was suggesting is a, uh, a a selection of different varieties, and we're calling them trees, but. We know they start out real small, and but some of them, I think, Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, don't go to two foot diameter. Yeah, they're all different sizes. Just, right, so different. some can remain yeah, some shrub, low to the ground, like, shrub like. Yes, yeah. Right. Mix them up, yeah. For instance, my own experience uh, is with uh, Radosia dogwood. They're used and they're recommended uh, to be used along stream banks to help uh, control erosion. My own personal experience with controlling erosion uh, goes back to uh, in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, uh, putting in erosion control measures for an earthen pier built in the 1800s that needed to be stabilized. The, uh, the Delaware River at that point had five or six foot tides. So you had this wave action and tide action. It had to be a very robust type thing. Uh, what was done there could be done here as well. Uh, if you wanted to stabilize the edge of the <coughs> river banks. We could go into that uh, more in into more detail later, but just know that there, there are measures and things that can be done that are natural looking. They're not hard surfaces. Oh, okay. one more thing. I think, I think the, you know, the, from the consensus of what I'm hearing here is that it's probably a real good idea to have some kind of engineering review, professional engineering review, and, and to have a plan for the entire lower deck, uh, maybe even the upper deck. Yeah. But that, in my opinion, I think that the three quarters of an acre that Peter is uh, suggesting should be planted with the materials that he is suggesting as kind of like a pilot project until there's time to uh, uh, have a full uh, discussion and possibly uh, studies performed. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Right. Uh, my name is Tom Kulia. I'd like to reiterate what he said. I think the town should get their own uh, engineer to look at that. Uh, I'm sure you get a lot of people who back you. And I'm sure you know that's that's good. But I think we should have an independent person mm -hmm. here to check out what is the best thing for our town at that spot because it's going to flood again, we know it. Uh, and, uh, and just to be planting in trees that we, we're going to hope that some make it is not the way to do that. I think we should have a, an engineer the town pays for and go by his. I know you're pretty strong on it, Don, uh, and you are too, but let's get somebody independent in there that, that, uh, to take a look at it. 
In the meantime, I guess I'm looking at the board right now. I know Peter's here tonight, and I think he's looking for you know, some uh, an idea of where we're going to go. Um, do we want to take some action? Do we want to move this forward? He's got a presentation out there to plant 300 trees on the western side of the lower oxbow, or the, the lower deck on the oxbow. I would support that proposal, and then also ask Kerry to um, see what a, a what a study by an appropriate engineering firm or engineer that's licensed in this kind of mm -hmm. spe uh, specialty. Um, and if it, the cost is not prohibitive, then we could ask that engineer to do the long term plan. But we would have step one done that is Peter has recommended. That would be my personal okay. position. That is a motion. Mm -hmm. Would you like to make that as a motion? I would. Okay, I have a motion by George to go forward with the uh, plan that Peter Danforth has put forward to plant 300 trees on the western side of the lower oxbow. With the, Do I have a second? With the caveat that. Uh, a, with the caveat that. A formal engineering report will follow. Uh, I guess I would want to is know that the cost of that engineering. Cost, yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, if the if the cost is reasonable, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And so, reasonable will be a, a select so decision. So about so we have a motion to do the planting and with the caveat of uh, a potential engineering study down the road. Shouldn't it be a hydrologist that looks Hold into on one it? Sec. Hold on one sec. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, so I have a motion by George and a second by Laura. Any discussion on the part of the board before I go to Zoom? I, I, all I can say to that is I think we the Oxbow is definitely a resource that we need to try to maintain and i know it's, it's painful for all of us to see that just would be painful for all of us to see it go away um i think anything we can do to mitigate the, the damage from the, the flood is something we need to we need to look into okay who is that up there nancy nancy yeah i i really think we should have a hydrologist is this this is nancy donovan yes okay we should really have someone who specifically uh, deals with water and it should be a hydrologist. I think to go from past experiences with floods, uh, we're in unprecedented climate change. It, that's, a, that's a fact. And we need a hydrologist that has the know-how about what we plant. Um, if we plant and there certainly shouldn't be any hard surfaces down there i think laura makes a great point we need to be moving forward um we don't want to put a lot of effort and time and money um maybe we should be looking at higher ground and and looking forward to where we need to be instead of bemoaning what we have maybe we should be putting our efforts somewhere else thank you Thank you, Nancy. Uh, I would just say, oh, Mason Kemmer, Laporte Road. Um, I would say civil engineer would be the appropriate resource for this. Um, hydrologist, definitely good with the water specifically, but not the runoff, erosion, the whole big picture of river, land, all together type deal. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion. Go ahead. Mary Lou Nichols Morrisville. I spend a lot of time at the Tenney Bridge uh, with my dog and all those there, and I've watched that whole erosion. Um, it looks like that, I don't know when, I've only been here nine years, but it looks like somewhere along the line, there was a whole lot of work done with all those rocks that are down there. Does anybody know the history of that or? Did, was that Morrisville Water and Light that did all that work? I'm wondering if that isn't the state when they replaced Tinney Bridge that did no, all that riprap. No, it's, rip been, it's been there for a long, long time, these rocks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So don't, because that, yeah, because Water and Light's protecting there. Is that a pump house it, there? It, well, the first pump house is gone. Yeah. The second one's good. Yeah. But is it, it looks like somebody along the this is we're not reinventing the wheel here. It looks like somewhere along the line there was a huge problem there at one time. So they must have had to try to figure out what to do about that because it's certainly helping not your the tenny part, Don, under the bridge, but 
going toward Morrisville, it's definitely helping yeah. there. But like you said, those dead trees come in and they form this natural barrier down there then too, which is, that's mother nature. So. Yeah, yeah thank you. Okay, we have a motion. I'm gonna, are we all set? Okay, so. One quick thing. Can, can we just throw in that we like make a plan to have a committee look into this to, to figure out what we're gonna do? I mean, as far as a plan, we're really going a little cart before the horse, but I'm, I'm all in favor of what's proposed. It's just like a proposing part of it and need to look at the big picture. So I would, I would ask that we would have the optical committee. Duly noted. Okay. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. So moving on, Oxbow Park event. Look at that. So, um, are you going to present this? Um, I can briefly. Um, so even with the manager of former government, we need the select board to review the application for the festival that they're planning this coming year. Um, so in front of you, I'm looking for my copy, there it is. Um, Boobs are doing a, I don't know if it has another more familiar name, Trish is here, but is it just Oxbow Music Festival is seeking um, authorization or approval on their application. And it is the same as previous years. Um, there's been no changes there, but it's a very popular program. And Trisha, yeah. you might want to come up to the microphone because I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. <laughs> this is, uh, this festival has happened for a number of years now. More than five years. And we've not had issues with this. We have not. Jason was fine with this. Okay, great. Thank yeah, you. That was great, Trisha, it's Trisha a great Fowler. Community. Oh, yeah, Trisha Fowler. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so we do need a motion then to accept this application. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion uh, that we approve the Oxbow Music Festival uh, permit. Do we need more details as presented? As presented. No, that sounds good. So I have a motion by Laura, second by Richard. Any further discussion? Is that this cover just, is this covering just the, the music agenda that on there, or is, it, is this covering the soccer games and stuff like that going no, on? No, this is it? just what we stated. It was an Oxbow Music Festival. Yeah, okay. It's not on any, this isn't a permit application for any other use. Okay. Yep. Right. Yep. Thank you, Tom Cloutier. Any further discussion? I just wanted to identify you. <laughs> yeah. For everyone out, out there, not that they don't recognize your voice. All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. Judy. Number seven, or number six, police. Can't wait just a bit, because we're kind of moving on, but we're almost done. Police department yeah. truck update. Um, so it's my understanding that uh, what's happening here is we do currently have a truck that needs substantial repairs. Correct. And uh, we do have in the new budget starting July 1, we do have uh, budget and a new, a new truck. A replacement, yep. Schedule. And so what, what administration is looking for is just consensus from the board, I believe, to uh, agree with the pre-ordering of this truck. Correct, because um, we like well, we did go out to bid in anticipation of replacing it on July, but just like we would do with our own vehicles, I don't think it's good practice to put a few thousand dollars into a vehicle we were going to get rid of anyway, um, and instead order this vehicle, and it, it will show up as a purchase on paper this year, but it will be paid for in the next fiscal year. Okay. It'll just show up as that. So it doesn't impact the current budget. It does not. It's yeah. just that we are going to, I'm going to authorize the purchase of it um, and we might take possession of it maybe in June. Um, is this a cruiser? One no, I, I get that. Well, I'm not sure how. I don't how, think of police department trucks. I think of their cruisers. What other trucks? It, it is, it's, yeah. it is a cruiser. I'm it's just one of the cruisers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's not, yeah, we don't have just utility truck, trucks okay. like yeah. the fire Well, we don't have any of the SWAT vehicles. <laughs> no, we do not have that. Yeah. Okay. And this isn't an, an addition 
to the fleet. It's this just a replacement. replacement. Okay. okay. And there's no no motion needed. There's no here. motion. No I action. can sign it. I just um, want you aware of something. It, it it'll show up probably in one of the financials, but it's okay. two months earlier. Sherry. Okay. Yes. Again, a rookie question. Mm. This is obviously far different than purchasing a customized fire truck, although right. it is customized because it's a, a police cruiser. Do we go through a bid process? What's we what's did. the methodology to get the best price of the vehicle? Yeah, no, they did, um, and we don't have to buy um, locally, but they did go out to bid, and that was one of the most competitive prices. Thank you. And repair is much easier, obviously, because it's a couple miles down the road. Okay. They give us priority, which is critical to it. Thank you, Kevin. So that's it. That's Any all other discussion on on this? Go ahead. Uh, James Brewster, uh, two questions. One, um, are we standardizing on a look uh, for our police vehicles? We seem to have a couple of mismatches in terms of some look this way, some look that way. Can we standardize a look? Are we doing that? It's a good question. I will follow up with the police I, chief. I think that the the top, I think you're referring to the, the new home. the new more black one. So that my understanding on that is that we were we needed to buy a vehicle and we couldn't get it like the reverse color scheme this is what we have mm -hmm. so that's why they ended up doing like the the skin or whatever you mm -hmm. call it that's why that is that way it's okay. like something to do with the, the availability we got what we could get i think that's what it came out uh, and, and my, I, I, I don't disagree with you yeah. and, and my second question is uh, and i have prosed this to to jason in the past if we can order this with defaulted to daytime running lights that would be great because I see our police cruisers riding around at dusk, no headlights on. Everybody else has got their headlights on, but our cruisers do not, and they're not visible. So if we could either get our officers to flip them on or get a vehicle that's defaulted to daylight, daytime running lights, that would be great. Sometimes that's more money, and we have clear messages not to no, do any of those things. Thank you for asking about the color of the vehicles. I've been yes. meaning to ask that for a while. Wondering if we were just out in front on something that I didn't know about, but okay. Thank you. It's for the camera angle. It's for our Zoom. <laughs> he wanted to be off camera. <laughs> okay, I think we're all set with the police department truck. Uh, town charter. I'm just wondering how we want to go forward with this. We didn't get everything done in the charter committee meeting tonight. No, I would just. Um, I would just stick with the actual charter itself and the communication plan we're going to do later. Okay. So the actual charter, I think we have a copy of that. Right. And when we... So some people might not know, we met at 4.30 today with um, the charter committee to um, ask if they'd recommend moving forward to the select board with their recommended draft of the charter. We and it's very short it's one page and one question i was going to ask in the charter committee meeting tonight was has is this all language that has been seen by the legislature the idea being that this is similar to language that other towns have that has been approved by the legislature? Um, yes, everything with the exception of part of the manager, one of the ma manager bullets was seen and, and from approved charters. That one is in uh, the Waterbury charter and they have, okay. they've seen it this season and they didn't have an issue with it. So I just, so technically, yes, the legislature has seen it, every one of the four sections of our charter. And that's important just for the public to know that uh, we've been told multiple times to make sure that the charter that we do present to the legislature is language that they've seen before so that they can hopefully more quickly adopt our charter if that's where it goes and also because you don't want as a town to start creating new laws that then haven't been tested and might be litigated um for a different reason, one you might not even imagine at this time. So yeah. there's a real reason for that. We're not just trying to make the legislature's job easier. Um, How's the board feel about the charter language? I'm uh, fine with it. I'm, I'm fine with it. I you know I want to be clear, but I think I already am, but just to be sure, the local option tax clause in here is solely here 
to provide us with the ability to go to the voters and ask for any or all of these. It doesn't take an action yeah. in any way, shape, or form. It, correct. It allows us to walk through a door if the voters want us to walk through the door. Yeah. That's and, correct. Thank and you. the voters will get the they will get the option to vote on the charter language and they'll get to the option to vote on the local option yeah. tax as a separate thank you that separate I issue. Yeah. And and I would just add to thank you for saying that also that this is just a starting point. There's lots of other things that we down the road can add such as ranked choice voting, appropriations, all kinds of things. So um, I think I can say this is that we opted to keep this very clean and simple uh, initially to get it passed. Um, Carrie, to, Carrie advised us that if it becomes too cumbersome, um, we really need this document to really kind of move forward. And now that we have a manager in place, this uh, gives both Carrie and uh, our new manager tools to really kind of really take us forward because otherwise we're just we're obligated to follow the state statutes which um, we know are it's been problematic okay <laughs> do we need to take action on this do we need to adopt this language um I, I think it would be great if you accepted this version of the charter um, okay. as presented on like, state the date uh, and vote on it yes is it necessary required problem it does say final draft of the charter mm -hmm. is there an issue because we didn't technically do a vote with the committee i don't want to right. upset some folks so i don't i don't want to uh, you know do we do we feel like we should get a, a formal vote from them first as a I, I don't think you need a formal vote those are advisory committees um okay. and it was clear from the informal consensus that um, all but one were in favor of, and I think that person that left early was also in favor of this, of yeah. the charter itself. Okay. Just the word two not here. I just don't wanna. It's, yep. it's a great question you're asking, Laura. Yeah. I don't, you know, because we do have, you know, we put committees together to get the public vote. And so I just don't wanna bypass them. We're certainly doing this yeah. because we anticipated that we were gonna move through that yeah. charter. Mm -hmm. Committee meeting I have a little to say, bit faster. The other two, I've not heard any significant. I don't remember. I don't hear. I don't remember hearing any objections either. But yeah. it, it doesn't change anything we're doing, and it doesn't put us okay. behind if you want to vote on it um, at the next meeting, which is April six. I mean May six. Yeah. Yes, May six. But are we going to have another charter committee meeting? Is this, is Not this before May 6th, probably. Okay. We, you, we'll have one in May, but it won't be before okay. your next meeting. So that's a meeting. It doesn't hold anything up. I take my lead from the chair. I guess my thoughts are, I mean, this language that we're looking at right now came out of the March meeting. It didn't come out of today's meeting. Yeah, so I this agree. was, I wasn't at that March meeting. You, you folks were there. Um, I would say... I would say adopt this. And it's pretty boilerplate. So I, I, do I don't I see why we should do anything other than accept it. And okay. I think that we had consensus from the other two members okay. of the committee. And, and Brian does agree that we need to move forward with this. He was just, I think, is more frustrated with the process. Some, some of the other yeah. things. Rather mm -hmm. than the language. Mm -hmm. Okay. In that case, I will take a motion to accept this um, draft charter. I'll make a motion to accept, accept the uh, draft of the charter on 422-24. Great. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the uh, draft charter language as presented? Aye. Aye. Be Aye. Una unanimous. Okay, thank you. Do you want to speak to communication? Um. Communication for the charter, or do we want to oh, just? Oh, um, no, I'd rather have. I mean, our communication plan for the charter is to have two public here um, meetings, the informational meetings this summer, um, and then start also doing some smaller outreach. But we haven't we haven't gotten approval from the committee on that. That's what we ran out of time today on. So, so that's I mean, overall, time. that's still the plan yep. um, and to have the vote in November, but we have not formalized the rest of the plan. Okay, great. 
Okay, I'm going to move on to highway update. And this is, I'm passing this on to you. Yes, so. Um, this is as promised that we've had multiple, I'm sorry. Not I just passed it. it on to you and I just cut we you off. We both talked about it. We didn't really, um, you know, we didn't write a script. With you. This is something we've been talking about for a little bit. So um, about, a, well, a couple months ago, right after uh, we lost Gilts Road, so I'm going to start with that one. Um, I had agreed, um, which it seemed like a good plan to update the folks and the select board once a month, every month on where we're, we're at with that. So that's a really large culvert that we lost. Um, you can't just go to a culvert store anywhere in this state and get a replacement. So I know that there's some frustrations. We've, we've fielded some calls. When are we going to replace that road? Know that it is um, so period punctuation. Know that it's a priority. Um, every single week I've talked to Kevin about this and Tyler Mumley. Um, late last week, I signed a contract. Uh, we went out to bid for the work, so I'll back up, and we got two bids in. Uh, we were trying to work with, they were very close in price, but we were trying to work with the lower bid because they were very similar products. Um, but the person with the lowest bid came back and couldn't get to us, um, possibly even until next year, which was pretty unacceptable. So we then pivoted to work with um, the acronym CL, they're concrete specialists. CS, yeah, it is CSI. I was thinking that was wrong, but um, I did sign a proposal. <laughs> um, I signed a proposal last week to get in the queue. So they are now engineering our specific culvert. And I keep stumbling over that word because it's technically called a bridge. It's such a large span that it's actually a bridge that has a curve and a flat bottom. And um, so we signed that, we're going to get in their schedule and I'm hopeful that that, as they promised, would mean that we will be able to replace it in 2024. Um, that being said, we still have to go out to bid. And you'll see this bid for those of you that pay attention to what we put out to bid for the site work. So you have the engineer work, and then you also have the site work of putting in this rather large uh, unit. So it's a process. We're, we're on it. Um, and a lot has happened in the last two weeks. Um, and also FEMA continues to grind forward slowly um, on what it will cover from that flood that caused the uh, the washout. Um, spring maintenance is something, oh, okay, sorry. Question. Yes, please. Jerry Throne. Uh, so that means that uh, the town is purchasing the culvert and will give it to the contractor to install? Yes, yes, I believe that's true. I mean, we're gonna work, it, they have their own engineering um, teams there, as you know, because I think you've done commercial projects, but we'll work with the site contractor. Okay. We're uh, not putting it in, I guess is my point today. Can you tell me what the approximate span is? Um, I think. Well, so if it's, if, it's, if it's probably, you know, 15 feet, yep. you could put in a temporary bridge. Yes, we could, but we asked for prices for temporary and the availability of temporary bridges. And whoever is at Jim Jones, you need to mute yours, please. As soon as you hit the space button, it comes undone. Um, what was I lost track? I was confused. Uh, you, you, you were saying that. Um, uh, you, you thought about a oh, you, you thought bridge. about temporary That's bridge. Right. You, so that was suggested was an option. Want, yeah, mm -hmm. but it's um, it starts at about two hundred thousand dollars, and given the um, talk to me afterwards. Okay, well, I, I don't know that we would want to. They they promised us early summer, so I don't know that it's May. You know, so I guess I will. I would, absolutely will talk to you. But if it's a fifteen foot, eighteen foot span. It's not that small. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we can talk. You yeah. certainly can educate me. I don't pretend to be a project expert here. So, but we'll talk to Tyler. Um, but just know we're working on it. I know it's a huge inconvenience because um, we're also replacing Walton Bridge. And there's a lot of people going in places they shouldn't go and going farther than they need to go. Um, but it's a, it's a priority. 
for a lot of reasons. Um, the other thing is we didn't, which I did not have time because we had some more time sensitive things to consider. Um, I have not prepared a formal manager report, um, but the Department of Public Works, in which we call Highway Department here, has been regularly providing us with weekly updates about what their plans are. I have plans um, or a, a written plan from the Highway Department about each specific thing that has been brought up as areas of concern, um, ditching, grading, filling potholes, of course, it's hopefully taken care of by grading, but, um, and also we went out to bid for paving recently. So the work to prepare each road before we can pave it um, is something that we're evaluating at the same time. So I was just gonna provide the, yeah, Overview. no, it's good. It's nice to see this. Nice to see the plan that Kevin's put together. And on the ditching in particular, we've had multiple questions about ditching and I would and grading. Uh, be nice to know what their plans are in grading and moving forward. And I know there's been some questions from neighbors of mine about tree and limb removal on the mm -hmm. sides of roads. That would be something else to add to that it's to that list. Sweep aprons. Excuse me. It's a sweep aprons. What is that? Sweep aprons? Um, Repair, wash out, sweep aprons? I think that has to do with, like, during the winter and a lot of debris on the road gets pushed to the edge of the road I and think you have to, yeah. you don't want the berm there. It creates water yeah, issues. Yeah, I think that's what. But I can ask him if it includes other things. I'm not no, sure what he's that's... referring to including there. But so he gives, gives us now, and I relay it to the select board, village <laughs> ditching. Um, Davison Lane, Sand Hill, Upper Cottage, Street, Beacon Hill, Lower Elmore, and Spring Hill Road, for instance. Line striping, we have gone out to bid. We know we need to do the crosswalks and the stop lines, but you can't do that until the average temperature of the road is much warmer. Otherwise, when you put it down, it will look great for a little bit, and then it'll just come up. Um, so I know it seems like it's warm, but the road surface temperature is not warm enough for that yet, um, and we're aware of that. Um, and the ditching, they're going to start. And this is not where they're going to end, of course, but uh, Stagecoach Road um, by Cags Fallen, Campbell Road, Caddy's Fall Road itself, Randolph Road, Repair Washed Out in Cool Hill, and uh, as Laura just alluded to, the sweeping <coughs> of the aprons. And they have numerous trainings scheduled for the coming month um, and are providing me and the select board more updates. So. I think this is going to evolve both for the residents and for the select board as um, they get more accustomed to providing updates and more frequent updates, then um, we can provide it to the public, especially when if you didn't see it, see them doing work, there's 100 miles of roads in this town, you probably don't know what they're doing all the time. Um, so you might miss that they're actually doing something and assume that they haven't done anything. Yeah. Anyway. And as you alluded to, Walton Walton Road Bridge is, um, is out, and so there's a lot of extra traffic in Mud City and up Fontaine Hill and Cody right. Hill. And, um, and that's like a three-month duration event. So, yeah. I mean, and that's hopefully what they're going to reach. But. Yeah. I was, I think Cody, I think Cody, I think Tony had his hand up first. Yeah, Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. So I actually called uh Derek Small last Monday when they took them bags off the signs going to Walton Road as I watched the traffic double the road was impassable already okay which the road? trans Cody Hill the transition from pavement to dirt there was potholes like this that's no exaggeration okay we don't see a grader up there maybe every three weeks. So I called Derek and tried to reason with him. And I got no reason with him because he, he just automatically thought that I was looking for service. I'm not looking for service. I'm looking to have our roads all over town reasonably maintained. They're not there and they're not gonna be there with the crew we got. I've got six pictures on my phone of a culvert that they fixed on Cody Hill or, or White Birch Road. It's sad, very, very sad workmanship. I'd like to share that with the board. If you're interested, 
If you're not, then we'll just keep on going like we are. You can send it to me and I will forward it to them. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, I don't blame the workers. Maybe they don't know how to do it. Maybe they're trying. I don't know. Something seriously is wrong with our crew. That's all I can tell you. To me, this here is unacceptable. If that's all they do for 14 people, that's unacceptable in my eyes. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. James Brewster, Morristown. Um, if we have an item that we think needs to be addressed, um, like I see one up on the Elmore Mountain Road that I think should be addressed, mm -hmm. where do I send that to? I mean, I can sit here and I can tell you guys, but. You should probably send it to me um, and Kevin if you have it, but definitely me or me and Judy. Okay. We will make sure that, um, Thanks. that it gets to highway. That's good. Thank you. Carrie Johnson. I'm not. Um... Any questions from the board before I move on? No, I believe there's one more. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Alan Ward, Marshtown Corners, Fontaine Hill Road. Um, I think that we should do away with this superintendent deal for the road. We don't need that position. I think. Take the one out that's foreman over there at Derek. He should just be an employee. He has no idea what's going on. He really doesn't. And replace these guys with one person to be a boss for two jobs. We don't need these three guys. I think that's what we should be doing and thinking about. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Uh, Tom Flutie, Morrisville. I'm going to follow up on that. We have nine workers on our, on our highway department. We have two foremen and we have one supervisor. Four of those workers take care of uh, 8.9 miles in the village. Four workers and a foreman. 8.9 miles is all they're responsible for. I would like to have uh, Mr. Burroughs here to justify that. Not now uh, and not to me. He's going to have to justify me when we come budget time. He's going to have to justify it to that fellow right there in a couple of months. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Right. But as a follow up to the three different conversations <clears throat> in the manager form of government, um, we're not going to talk about specific personnel at a public meeting you can make comments in general you can send them to myself you can send them even again at budget time you can keep saying this every meeting because much of the information you just shared was repetitive but we don't talk about personnel in open session we're not going to do that and, and you can debate it with me no, no, if we want to meet no. but this isn't the forum for personnel anymore i know you guys did that before we had the manager former government it's not acceptable to do that and my point was for the department heads to justify it by going yeah to i got that not bringing it out here yep i don't want to bring it out here i i'm not bringing it out here i'm you, just telling you've you. asked me that in the past though so i guess i wasn't sure if you were including that tonight as well no, so no. We're, we're just not i just want to be clear okay. so we all have realistic expectations no i understand that's, okay good I, that's where it should be and i think Perfect. that's where it will get cleared up all right okay awesome. thank you i think we're going to move on so i'm going to move on to approving the warrants make a motion to approve the warrants second got a motion by richard second by george all those in favor of any discussion about the warrants Aye. Aye. We've all signed. All those in favor of approving the warrants? Aye. That would be Aye. unanimous. Community comments. Go ahead. Uh, Evelyn Throne. A um, couple different things. Uh, as far as the Oxbow Park, um, I would make this very short because I know we're going to have a lot of talk about the full range plan, and I think that's a really good idea. Um, I hope that it starts in everybody's mind the idea of slowing the river down and that's really true with with you can do it with beaver dams on you know that would be the natural way that it happens you can do it with weirs which are a, a man-made form of beaver dam uh but but to just 
to just plant and then hope that when the water comes that it helps. I think I hope that we look at ways to slow and actually maybe even te temporarily at times flood certain areas so that that's how the water doesn't keep going downstream so fast. Um, also, there was uh, about the highway department, I guess um, there. I've noticed that at the beginning of the year when they first paint the walkways, the, the, the striped walkways, the crosswalks, um, that, that it's nice and obvious. By the end of the year, it's a bit of a hazard to walk around in this town because the, like part, half of, half of the stripes are gone or three quarters of it. You can barely see where they are. I thought there was a comment at one point that there would be more, there was more heavy duty paint that they could use, but that was more money. I think, I don't know if that's true or not, but I just would like that issue looked at because yeah. I feel like it's a real safety issue. It's an issue that the town looks better. If the stripes are good, it looks like a maintained town. And I mean, I walk constantly around town and it, it's, you know, it, it would certainly help my well-being and I think it's it's important financially to cover yourself in a town too to have something like that be done right so if there's a way to do it so it lasts longer in a year I'm all for it thank you on both of those points well timed. Yep. go ahead <laughs> James Brewster um, while we're on the topic of painting um, I guess it wasn't on my mind before but it is now um, I would advocate, and I think it's Maple Street, um, headed out Elmore Street. Um, there are parking spaces on the right as you go from Maple Street out Elmore Street, out past the dentist's office before you get to the bend. I would ask that those not be repainted and that those not stay parking spaces. That's a really dangerous section of road and it's really, really thin. And when you've got the cattle trucks coming down there and you're going up and you've got, you know, it's just really dangerous. And I don't believe that it's the town's responsibility to require or to create parking spaces for those residential buildings. Um, not to mention that if you were to travel up and down that road as often as I do, you would see that there's rarely anybody ever parked in those spots. So to decrease the safety to create parking spaces for people that don't ever park there doesn't seem to make sense. So I would love to see all those parking spaces go away, move the yellow line right down the middle, give a bike lane on either side. I just that's something I'd like to see. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I've often wondered what the history on those parking spots is too. I don't, I think that yeah. it's probably, it wasn't always that way. Yeah. So. Hmm. Any other comments? Go ahead. I wasn't going to talk about uh, payment. Identify mortgage, yourself. I'm sorry. But since it was brought up, uh, Jerry Throne. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, do town employees uh, uh, install or paint the pavement markings? Or is no. that? No. So that's uh, a contractor that does it that. Is. Okay. So then I would suggest you look into thermoplastic pavement markings, which last a lot longer. Number two, uh, about a month ago, uh, we heard about the Walton uh, Road Bridge and uh, Mark Cody mentioned at that time that the, uh, the bridge on Bridge Street over here, Little Pony Trust was uh, uh, rusting. And that's a, uh, uh, a bridge that's not painted and it's, it's supposed to uh, not require maintenance. But uh, because he thought of salt that was being sprayed and applied that that was causing uh, 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 deterioration. So I went and looked at it. And sure enough, uh, there is thick rust pack that you can take with your hand and remove it and other areas where it's somewhat adhered. But I'm bringing this up because he brought it up and I don't know if anything else has been done since then. It's a serious maintenance concern. Thanks, Jerry. What bridge was that, Jerry? That's Bridge Street. Bridge Street. Bridge. Oh. Uh, Favreau. Favreau. The Favreau, thank you. Yeah, Favreau Bridge. My final say. Uh, as well, identify uh, yourself. Some I'm you, sorry. Tom Cloutier. Some of you know that I uh, do uh, some teaching in uh, 
quite extensively, actually. And my main job as subteacher is uh, to, to prevent harm from any children. That's the main teacher's job. Teach them, then comes in second. I'm getting to is the soccer field that is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be used this summer uh, for young children to learn how to play soccer. I, I was down there yesterday and the other day and the day before that and walked that soccer field. There are stones there the size of golf balls throughout that soccer field. There are wood chips the size of quarter throughout that soccer field. Tom, just for clarification, this is the lower deck or the upper deck? This is the upper, this is where the soccer field is painted is, right is now. Is presently, upper deck. upper deck. That's where it was flooded and it left all these nuggets of rocks and wood chips. And if you play soccer, you do sliding tackles. And uh, I'm sure you know about sliding tackles. This is where the child goes down in the knees and to, on the ground and slides for that ball. There is going to be injuries down there with these kids because of those rocks. You cannot slide on rocks. You cannot slide without injury on these wood fibers, whatever they are, wood chips. And to allow that to continue in charging 200 bucks per child, I understand, with the field down there that's half the size of original of a normal soccer field is doing injustice to the town and to those kids. I have contacted the capital soccer president or director. I haven't heard back from him. I'm not sure if, uh, if uh, he's been advised that that field is not anywhere near ready for children. Thank you. Seeing no other, I do have a, is that a hand up? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, yes, I just, I just wanted to clarify in a green recreation coordinator um, that the capital soccer camp is not happening at the Oxbow field. Um, I was, that was brought to my attention and I just wanted to make sure that the public knew that I'm aware of the, um, the plan was to play on the lower deck and that's not happening, um, but the camp is not happening at the Oxbow at all this year, so. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Anna. Yep. Would that mean the swing is not going in also? The... We have not made any decisions about the swing because I need to talk with uh, Todd about that because the revised uh, requirements added about $3,000 to the cost of the whole program, which is outside the budget. We had fundraised for that, so it wouldn't cost the town any money. So I'm going to try to find out um, if we can compromise with that, but I have not done so yet. To replace Stay the swing at the exact spot where the swing was washed away mm -hmm. from, the, from the last flood, seems like a no-brainer that you would not do that to save money. It does seem like a no brainer. There's many, many things that we've been doing here that are um, time sensitive, like okay. the vicious dog hearing. We had to act on that. I would yeah. say that took conservatively half my week last week. All right. Um, we're getting FOIA requests and requests for information on a daily basis. That All also right. takes an in order, it takes a lot of time to respond to. So these things are great. Nobody. I mean, to, in all seriousness, no one wants to not put a swing set back. I just have to make sure we're going to do it within our permits. I would okay. stay tuned. This is all part of that that plan that we yeah. obviously need to do for the Oxbow. There's right. many components to it. This I is just think, one part. Of it. I think maybe somehow the public's got to get rid on it. I mean, and it was really nice to know that they're not going to have it down there. I don't know where they're going to, but the I field is already there. there. So it's a right. great relief. But, oh. I haven't given up forever. It's not right now. Okay. okay, I'm going to move on to schedule. We have uh, on Monday, May 6th, this is the next select board regular meeting at 5.30. On Monday, May 20th, that's what's on the agenda right now. That's a Monday, it's a Monday night, obviously. Uh, on Tuesday, it's my understanding, will be the next school vote. So that select board meeting will likely change. And uh, at this point, we don't have a definite date to for it, do we? No, I, I was hoping if 
at least the four of you here, if you could make the 22nd, the Wednesday, that would be helpful. I think we're going to need to approve bills. There could be some other things going on, of course. George, I George cannot. you cannot be here on the 22nd, Richard? But I couldn't have been here on the 20th either, so it's... Okay. <laughs> so Wait, there's a 23rd? Oh. Yeah, you I'm gone for the week. Okay. Yeah, and I can't Zoom. Oh, no, no. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. Um, I can be available. I think Chris was available, but can we wait till the sixth to make well, a we decision? We can then. We should take another poll. So because... just so the public knows, then mm -hmm. the twentieth is not likely to be a select board this meeting because be for those of you that might be in the audience that aren't certain why this room is used for elections and it's hard to set up elections and have a select board meeting the yeah. same day. So and then the next Monday is Memorial Day, which is right. Yeah, the next yeah. Okay, I'm going to move on to other business. 20 seconds of DRB meeting. Okay. So, okay, thank you, Todd. Never mind. So, for those of you on Zoom that didn't hear that, the 22nd won't be available either. There's a DRB meeting in here. I am then going to move on to other business. And um, we are going to enter, we're going to continue the vicious dog hearing. And that will go into deliberative session. So I'm going to have to ask. And I also have a couple of quick executive session items. Okay. So do we need motions down. for this? Do we need a motion to go into deliberative yeah, session? For both of them. So I need a motion to go into deliberative session to continue the vicious dog hearing. I'll make a motion to go into deliberative session to continue the vicious dog hearing. Do I have, okay. I have a second? So I have a motion by Richard, a second by George. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. I'll make the motion to go into executive session. Do you want me and do you want Do you want me? Yes. Yes. To include Carrie and Brent. To include Carrie and Brent. Brent, don't leave. Brent Raymond, don't go anywhere. Okay. We're including Please. you. Thank you, everybody. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. You want to see my pictures? Tony, Tony, no, Tony, no, one second. We've got to do this. No, just hold it. Discussion? No discussion. All, all those in favor of the motion is presented? Yes. Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Carrie's our contact person, Tony. Just that one? Okay. I got a little nutty. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, I guess. Something to do with it.